boom, we're back. All right, today's giveaway is MAPS Aesthetic. Very popular MAPS workout program for people who want to build muscle, sculpt their body, shape their body, develop symmetry and balance. It's a bodybuilder type workout program. Here's how you can enter to win that program for free. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things, and then if we pick your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access for life to MAPS Aesthetic. One more thing, we only have 72 hours left for our huge promotion in February. We had two programs that were 50% off. The first one, MAPS Aesthetic, I just told you about that one, that one's 50% off. The second one is MAPS Performance. This one is more athletic-minded, okay? So if you like unconventional exercises, you're all about movement, quality movement, and performance. MAPS Performance is the workout program for you. They're both 50% off right now, okay? And there's only three days left for this particular promotion. So if you want MAPS Aesthetic, go to mapsblack.com. If you want MAPS Performance, go to mapsgreen.com. And then the code for 50% off for both of them is FEB50. All right, here comes the show. One of the best exercises for your lower body in terms of development, strength, speed, and function, up there with squats, is the sled. All right, we got to talk about the sled again. Amen. You please, know what? Please, can we get a sponsorship so we can get paid for you I pushing know, the sled so I hard? I dude. This is not a specific <laughs> sled. You know? well, dude, we've talked I, about the sled like at you're least. You're reiterating like, what I've been trying to be an evangelist for forever. Dude, you know how he is, though? It's like he he waits forever to do it until it's like on his terms. Yeah. And then once he like. Right, yeah, but then he's got my What back were we just finally. talking about? We were talking about something the other day that you were like really enjoying or you're liking. And I'm like, I've been trying to get you to do it forever. What was it? We were just talking about it yesterday. I don't remember. Game of Thrones. No, no, no! It was something. It was something else. That was Forever something. Oh no! It was Twitter. Uh, it's a, yeah, so he comes right. in. He comes in the studio. Dude, this is made for me. Okay, he comes. In the, I knew that he ca- already. He I comes in the studio. More... Whatever, bro. You come in the studio. <laughs> so, like maybe two, three years ago, I was like, Sal, bro, you were made for Twitter. You shouldn't even be fucking with Instagram. Like it's totally for you. You always have all these thoughts, and you're you should just be putting out tweets all day long. I said you'll blow up. He did it for like five minutes and then fucking didn't mess with it after that. After Instagram kicks him off, now he's on and he comes in the office and say, bro, yeah, Twitter yeah. was made for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I, you know what? I didn't want to do more social media. I was over it. But now yeah. that I got kicked off Instagram. Yeah, yeah now you can focus on it, right? Now, yeah. I want, now I'm just pissed off. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. but back, back to the sled. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, had you asked me five years ago, name your top three lower body exercises for just you know overall development and strength, all that stuff. I would not have put the sled in there. I don't think I would have put the sled even in the top yeah. eight, maybe. Very underestimated. <clears throat> it's super underrated. But now, for sure, it's up there. And it's up there for a few different reasons. One, it does build a lot of muscle and strength. It's a great hypertrophy exercise. But the main benefits of it are doesn't damage your body at all like other exercises. So you can do a tremendous amount of volume and frequency with the sled. The injury risk is really yeah. low. The damage and soreness, uh, you know, issues are really low. So it's like, it's, right now, what I'm experiencing is the more I sl- do push the sled, the more fit and strong and muscular my legs. It's are. so complementary to all the other compound lifts, and um, yeah, like you said, building up the volume and the work capacity. You know, so for athletes, uh, I that was like my go-to mm-hmm. was to get their legs strong and then also have them on their forefoot. Uh, instead of always, um, you know, back on their heels for squats. So, you know, building that foot strength, there's lots of benefits that, uh, you know, you don't really realize from it. Well, do you think why that is, is because there's not a lot of things that you can do for your legs that, that take out the eccentric portion of the exercise. hundred percent. And yeah. so yes. you're not doing as much, da- but you can load it like really heavy. So similar to like Olympic lifting, right? Yes. So that's about the Except only Except Olympic thing. lifts are so technical. Well, right, right. Yeah, Olympic lifts. And that, maybe that's what it is. So what a great way to, to, to draw uh, um, maybe like an example for the, the audience. Like why the sled is so awesome is you get similar type of benefits in Olympic lifting, but it's extremely technical. I can teach a... 80 year old lady to push a sled yes so she can get some of those benefits that you that some advanced athletes can get from olympic lifting she can now get with the you sled need, you need minimal mobility <clears throat> for a sled in comparison to other very effective lower body exercise like it's very natural squat. as far as teaching right I very mean, yeah. easy to teach uh if i train a kid who's never worked out before or somebody who's got issues with you know mobility we can usually do some form of the sled um, it's, you know, split stance. So it's very natural for athletics. And I would have never guessed the muscle development would have been so incredible because of the lack of the negative. Now it is true that the negative portion of exercises is one of the most effective, you know, muscle building aspects of, of a rep. However, 
if you if you add lots of volume and frequency, which which you can do when you don't have the negative, right? When, without the negative portion and the safety of an exercise like a sled, you could do it more often and more frequent. So I literally can push the sled for four sets, three days a week. And it I have no, I don't feel anything on my joints and my body like I would if I did any other lower body exercise, but I still get like this great muscle building and strength effect from it. I, I can't believe I underrated it for so long. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's definitely up there. So yeah, you were you you this whole time. You, and the problem, Justin, is that you, uh, for me at least, was that you sold it so much as a functional exercise, which is uh, very true. Yeah. Uh -huh. And for hypertrophy minded people like me, which I tend to be also, it makes me kind of discredit a little bit. Like okay, yeah. I like the functional aspect, but well, that was the main focus of I think when um, a lot of when you see it in the gym, like only like your functional athletic type. Yeah. Uh, you know, coaches and, and uh, you know, athletes in the gym were actually using it. So, yeah, there's so much more. Um, it, it translates so much more to other avenues like hypertrophy and, and other pursuits that uh, I think you're going to see a lot more people trying to figure out how to incorporate in their program. Yeah, and side effect, by the way, you push the sled, you your calves grow a little bit too. Yeah. Not very many lower body exercises will do that. Yeah. It was one of the uh, it's one of the things that I did to keep the my volume up on my legs when so men's physique there's no benefit to me getting like massive legs but I cared personally about keeping my leg size because it was something that I was working on for so long so when I switched over to getting ready to compete for men's physique where I'm being judged by mostly my upper body and maybe a little bit of my calves um, I didn't want to lose size on my legs one of the ways that I kept the volume up was because I was so focused on all the upper body type stuff was to keep driving the sled on a, a regular ba basis mm -hmm. like I loved it so as a uh, hypertrophy guy at that time I actually use it a lot like that and there's a lot of we had some old videos when we were at the other um, uh, what what gym was that oh that was a uh, club sport or whatever there for a yep. bit, yeah. yeah I don't know if you remember or not but th that was back when I was competing yeah, used it quite a bit I use it a lot yeah. in fact <clears throat> one of my favorite exercises that we and we don't talk about it that often and replacing leg extensions is to drag the sled backwards yes. is to drop down at 90 degrees just so I'm basically I'm simulating like I'm si like I'm sitting down right but I'm yeah. holding the sled and then to walk backwards oh it's it's all quad like, oh all quad just yeah. would get a, a massive pump from uh -huh. that and feel so good and you're doing something that's functional so yeah I love doing uh this and Justin really got me doing it into the, like the sled slide side drags and things like that which I needed to do more of those like doing it like karaoke yeah. style to the side, but there's so much that you can do for your lower body with it. The only, obviously the drawback is not everybody has the, um, you know, the, the, that much room to do that. Yeah. Right? Well, you, you know, I didn't Most know Most gyms don't now have it. So they do, but I, I didn't know this. So you could buy a sled. They're relatively inexpensive, but they're usually <clears throat> the ones that slide. So mm -hmm. you would need like grass or something smooth. It's hard to do it on the street or you push driveway. it on the street though, don't you? I, I do at home. I've, I've seen you push I don't it on give the street shit. before. <laughs> but just I didn't know this. That, that asshole neighbor, yeah. it's fucking six o'clock in the morning, you hear this. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Me. that's me. I can just imagine living next to you. <laughs> I got a long ass driveway too, so I'll go up and down it. I, I remember. I remember the first time I seen you doing a video, and I thought this this motherfucker gets up at six o'clock in the morning and trains. He's got. This, I mean, this is back when you were living in the townhouse, yeah. and I'm thinking. You got people right next to you. And they they gotta hear this sled track. Hey, you know what's funny? Yeah, hey, you street. know what's funny? A couple times, this is true. Get it done. Man. A couple times, a neighbor walks out because I know they hear me. They walk out, and what do they see? Yeah, big, they white big beater, sweaty yeah, dude. big white beater guy. Yeah. What's gonna yeah. say? Push the sled. So like, oh, go guy back comes inside. out in his hey, rope. I uh, oh, anyway, carry yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And they walk yeah. back inside. Yeah. <laughs> no. So it's 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 pretty hilarious. Jerk. So uh, how was the the night alone? I know both of you guys were home alone. No last wives. Night. Yeah, yeah. So what was the deal? What, how, oh, let's yeah. start with you, Adam. What did you do last night? Uh, you know what I. What, what do what do men do when they're alone? Oh God. Yeah. Talk about <laughs> I, the manly I think you stuff you did, Adam. Guess. I'm gonna yeah, set you up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. So uh, I did a live. I'm doing more of the lives. I don't know if you guys are seeing. I know you guys, we don't pay attention to each other's Instagrams that often, but I've been doing more uh, Instagram lives when I can. Obviously, when I don't have Katrina and I don't have the kid there, I, I don't feel guilty for, you know, f taking off for an hour, right? Mm -hmm. And just sitting on my phone and talking to Instagram people, right? But it seems that people really enjoy that. It's more interactive. Um, the reason why I do the, the Q&A where I answer and I don't do video is because I can answer more questions in case someone's wondering, because I've been asked this before, like, do more live. 
You're well, not required to be on. That's right. right I can multitask. Else. We could be yeah. sitting here talking work and business. I can answer two, three questions yeah. at the same time. And then I can also be with Katrina and Mac. So that's the reason why I do just typing the answer because I feel like I can answer more and help more. So yeah. you did a live then? So I did a live first, right? So that was like the first thing I did. <clears throat> of course, I smoked a little bit of weed, put my feet up and relaxed. Um, and then I... You know, I drew a, 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 a bubble bath. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why do you do that every time? I'm a big bath Wait, guy. But hold on. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> bath. Yeah. Fine. Why bubbles? I don't know. It just feels better, doesn't it? No. Am no, I only one? those like, little balls that you put in there? Oh, no. We have we the... have Epsom salt. That I, so we have a, a nice... Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we have the nice Epsom and then just, salt. And then you have like Bro, if you had... children's bubble bath? Did no, you, not children's. Did you take actually... the, the uh, Valentine's roses and just, you know, no, like, put the petals out I don't get that crazy. But you know the bubbles, you, you know, gets all uh, uh, silky on your body and makes you feel soapy and clean. Oh, you're making and so, me feel weird. No, right now. I don't use Mister Bubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. No, I don't. I see. We have this. Kid, I'll dude. actually share. Like we do have like a, um, I don't know, like a like a spa like uh, bubble bath. Like it's a, an adult <laughs> bubble bath. I'm gonna say <laughs> Mister Bubble Bath we, for adults. And then we, yeah, it is. Wow. Uh, what does it smell like? Creepy, yeah. No, it's got a. Um, uh, like a lavender, it's lavender and something else, and it is uh, I forget I forget I'll sh I'll I'll post or share I'll find or have Andrew two parts find it estrogen first. one part <laughs> bubble water no, but and kidding. then I and then I had the uh, <clears throat> brought the the TV in there so I was just like I mean I was probably in the bath for like two hours so I, <laughs> I ended up you know what I watched so hold on so you sitting there I got a picture of this right now <laughs> with your big ass I know you guys have a big tub but you're a tall guy so yeah. your your big ass is in there so your knees are probably sticking out no like the, these tub our tub our tub <laughs> Bubbles all over. No, 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 our tubs are like huge. They're they're every bit uh, six foot long. Oh, so your your legs are. You're oh okay yeah, I can then. extend yeah. all. The, yeah, no, it's. I even I roll a towel behind my neck and I'm like all in and there. I got my I got my joint up on the window seal and my drink and then I'm remote so I can watch. What are you the drinking? Team. Glass of wine. No, I was having. No, I wasn't having. I wasn't romancing myself. You know, okay. I just had a, I had a, <laughs> I had a Sevia. You know, so I was okay. drinking a Sevia. Cool. And Man. but you know what I did watch last night? I didn't know this was out. You guys have to watch this, which. It's interesting how Netflix is doing this. So there is a new documentary series on Kanye West. And weird, though, you know how we talked to uh, Mark, um, the, his last name's going to escape me right now, the Netflix co-founder? Yeah. He, Randolph. Randolph. You Thank you, Doug. He said that, remember when I brought up the question of like, I thought that it was a strategy about HBO and- To release it slow. To, yeah, fast. to drip it over time and so that. And he says, no, that's not the strategy because they, they just don't have enough content. So they do that. Well, guess what Netflix did? What? The Kanye West docuseries is a four-part series that's already been shot that has the dates that dri are dripping over the oh, next- Oh, so they're dripping it on purpose. It has to be. So oh. it's the first one I've ever seen like this. Huh. But dude, this documentary, how cool is this? Okay. His uh, Kanye West's buddy Cootie is a videographer kid at the t this time. He's 19 years old. They actually were already starting to document Kanye's journey back when he was living at home with his mom and nobody. Well, one knew thing he doesn't lack is confidence. I was gonna say, why? bro, it's it's pretty, he had, had self belief reason. right away. Yeah, oh yeah, very much self belief. Uh, very much so. And he calls a lot of stuff, and he got turned down by so many people. And it's a, it's really inspiring to watch. And I'm not like a huge, like huge Kanye West fan. I mean, I, I, I like his stuff. I know a lot of people hate on him because he seems crazy and this, that. But I tell you what, after you watch, I don't know if you could watch that and not like the guy. Like you he's know got a, he's got a really, he's had it since day one, had a really positive attitude, even on the way he wanted to rap and the stuff that he wanted to talk about. Because he came from the same, he came from the same ghettos. He's from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Like he came up with people getting shot in the streets, but He's like, I put my head down and I, I, I grinded and worked and I didn't want to get into the the gang shit and yeah. people hate people were hating on him because he wasn't street enough. He's like, motherfucker, I grew up yeah. on Seventy Sixth Street my whole life and but I just because I I decided to to read and to learn and to to work on my craft and put my head down and stay out of trouble and stuff like that. I'm gonna get hated on by my peers because of yeah. that. And mm. so he really was kind of held back from. No, or not held back, but not a lot of people would would give him the credit early on. And he was doing beats for like Jay Z and stuff early yeah, on. He's super talented. Oh, super talented, yeah. and it's a great. I, I watched. You know what he, he reminds me of uh, Alex Jones, but in the sense that <laughs> you know you wow. know why. 
because same thing like Alex Jones, they say a lot of crazy shit, but and then some of it comes true. In, like, inside like that crazy 70% shit, percent is truth. Yes, in there. inside of it, there's some truth yeah. and some brilliance. So they'll see like you know, you know, gay frogs, lizard people, blah blah blah, <laughs> and then they'll say something. Be like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's brilliant. I mean, it's, you, like, it's like surrounded it's actually by a pretty good. Though. That's actually a, a pretty good comparison for the, how you're comparing it because I think that that is what I think is intriguing about him is like the things that he's saying at like 18, 19 years old, and you're, it, I mean, the kid is is broke and barely coming up, yeah. but he was he was prolific at that age, dude. Like already, dude. And, have you heard him? Have you seen how he makes fun of uh, what's the guy's name that's banging all the chicks now? Is hooking up with Kim? What's his name? Weird. He looks Pete like Davidson? he's half dead. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh, Pete, yeah. Davidson. Pete Davidson. He. Have you seen how he talks shit about Pete Davidson? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. It's hilarious. Yeah, I would bro. love yeah. to see that. He but, has a nickname for him. I can't. Maybe Doug can look it up. Look up Kanye West's nickname for Pete Davidson. It's hilarious. But he said something like, "Pete Davidson's like, hey man, you know, I respect you. You as a father, I'll treat your kids. Whatever. He's like, you will never meet my kids. You know, <laughs> it's like saying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't blame him though. Would you want Pete Davidson around your no, kids? No, Hell no, for sure. But yeah, that was, I mean, awkward. that was pretty much. My, and then I moved from the bathtub and poured myself a ginormous uh, bowl of of magic spoon you, with my, on your period my blueberry <laughs> super dance. <laughs> you I had the whole box. I was, it was such a yeah. I he calls know. a high skeet. What is it? What is what is that? I don't oh, that's know. his name. Oh, that's who he calls Pete yeah. Davidson. Yeah, I don't know, dude. High ski. Why is he called that, bro? <laughs> yeah, what is the word high ski? Yeah, what is the word? You know, I I, 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 I want you guys to watch it though because again, I'm not a big, I'm not like a big Kanye West fan, but I'm more of a, a fan of oh, him it's now. Oh, a trashy after, white male. After oh, okay. watch, after watching the the documentary, and I'm really excited to see the yeah. rest of it because how cool is that that. They were following him around with a camera, like yeah. really, really early on. I That's mean, awesome. There's there's clips of him, you know, meeting Jay Z very like for the first time, and like them like turning him down, and no one signing him as a record label, and like him still walking out, and you think he'd be all discouraged, and you know that's the thing about successful people is you don't see all the the consistency mm -hmm. and determination and tenacity yeah it looks that's like, why this is so good it looks you, obvious right you see Kanye. Yeah. oh well of course he's so successful because he's so talented you have no idea what led to that. i had that conversation right. on my live last night a kid came on a young or young guy came on and was um discouraged he's been a personal trainer for a little while and he just feels like the market is oversaturated you know and i, I kind of went on this rant about you know one, you're, you're not being fair to yourself. Uh, two, the the market is, is saturated, but saturated with with mostly garbage, and there's there's still tons of people to help out. Yep. And I said you can't you can't look at someone like myself or my partners and go like, oh, you know, I want to try and do that, and and think that the answer is hacking some algorithm or being great on a podcast. The real success of the business is the two decades. Yep. Before one hundred percent is, is getting all of our getting all of our lumps and bruises. I said if we if we had let's say we had all the the same like you know know how as far as podcasting and e commerce and everything that we know now at twenty three and tried to do this it wouldn't be successful. No, you wouldn't have the experience. Our advice would be shitty. Yep. It, would it wouldn't be, be it wouldn't be life changing. It wouldn't be helping so many people out. So it required us to get knocked down and get back up and knocked down and get back up for two decades in order to create something so special today. And so, you know, if you're a new trainer and you've only been doing this for a couple of years and you're comparing yourself to some of the people that are doing big things and going, oh my God, it's oversaturated. Yeah. You're focusing on the wrong thing. You've yeah. got to go and put the work in. You want and, to and you're just trying to justify why you want to either quit or why it's not working. That's right. Know? And the and the real greats, you know, tying it back to Kanye, I mean, these people have been grinding for a long, long time before you saw the overnight success. And if you compare yourself to the the small window that you knew them, yep. uh, you're you're really doing a disservice to yourself. You have no idea. You so have no I, idea. Yeah. So you so I want to go back to your magic spoon bowl. So you're <laughs> yeah. in the you're in the you're in the bathtub. No, no, no. I don't eat it in the bathtub. This is what I moved from the bathtub back oh, down to the living room. Is this like one of those serving bowls? I do. Yeah, so I like only have those chips. bowls. So and it was it was a Christmas gift like four or five years from Katr someone in Katrina's family. We're like because we had you know we had. A traditional like uh, cereal bowls for people. It's just tiny, tiny. Yeah, what is that? Crap? Yeah, yeah. I'm you know I'm a 230 pound man, dude. I need like yeah. a. So all of my bowls are like they're, they're they are they're they're technically serving bowls, but I use them yeah, as yeah. like eating eating. So yes, I had a 
I don't know, maybe a, I'd say a half a box of, of blueberry. It's like a good 70 grams of protein. Yeah, yeah. Half oh, a, half a box of blueberry. with, And I love slicing a fresh banana on it. Now are you watching, oh, is this so when you were watching Kanye? Yeah, so I, well, I started off watching another doc and then I, I came downstairs after the, the bubble bath and, and made my big old bowl of Magic Spoon and lit the fire and laid, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your played, toenails all oh, fresh? Dude, you know, it's funny. There, it's funny now having. What's a, the song he played, Justin? <laughs> you know, it's so it's so different. Uh, <laughs> having a family and being older now, and like and having a, a night to yourself. Like you just how, want to do nothing. I do. Uh, yeah, like it's it's amazing. Dude, Jessica's like she goes she goes. I would have never guessed this. She goes, but like I literally fantasize about sleeping. She's mm -hmm. like, I yeah. just picture being able to sleep and sleep in <clears throat> and then wake up and eat a little bit and going yeah. back to sleep. Parent <laughs> life right yeah. there. Oh, and that's what I, I watched the, uh, the Ali Wong stand up. Oh, oh yeah, I watched that. And she hey. talks about, she talks about talking shit to single people. Hey, Dude. she went hard, bro. Did she, she not go hard? The mouth on her is so hilarious. I Dude. love her. Yeah, yeah she love was, her. She was she, good. <laughs> oh, she went hard. Some of the, yeah, the, the most uh, filthy. Oh, I loved it. Dude, Dude the part that made Jessica and I laugh, so it's going to be a little explicit here, is like she's talking about like uh, coming on in the face. Yeah, yeah. I she goes, you're gonna and she just it, stops. Yeah. She goes, "I love, come on my face." On my face. <laughs> I'm like, what did you say? <laughs> She's it like, was everything. She has a good explanation. She goes, "Cause then you're done." Her she's whole, like, blow jobs are so much she's work. She's reenacting like oh, oh her wow. whole bit about uh, yeah. being a a wealthy, powerful uh, woman. Yes, uh, like in comparison, that's actually some truth. And no, there. That's why it was actually These really. These guys can't handle. I mean, some of the yeah. best jokes in, in comedy is stuff that has that's that's uh, the the root of it is is true. No, you know, totally and, and I actually in, I think why I thought it was so funny is. I, you know, I just, that's not something I would think about. Like, wow, how funny is that? As she gets wealthier and more famous, her pool of guys shrinks. <laughs> yep. And the opposite is true for, for a famous dude. Yep. Right. And I thought, wow, that's really, that's really an interesting perspective. But she had a whole bit on it that I thought was really <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah, she did a good job. So you know, like scary dick yeah. Yeah. offerings. You know? Yeah, I know. Yeah. This, right, guy, so what, this guy was uh, wi you, wifeless last night, yeah, too. Did you, take a, of scary. did you take a bubble bath? I'm, I'm pretty sure he did, and I'm pretty sure no. he, he sandpapered. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a completely different process, dude. It was terrible so uh I, I don't really smoke often like sometimes i'll do edible but i decided like i had one I, I it's like my emergency stash you know and i found this joint and so i went out and i let the dogs out do their thing and i'm outside uh smoking i went inside and what was on tv i just kind of stumbled across was like six cents right uh, so i haven't seen that movie forever oh, so wow. you're stoned so alone good. in I'm the stoned woods alone. in the house i had like again the paranoia and all that is like kind of setting in and and of course i don't know you know obviously like this is because i set myself up for this but uh, another reason why i think my house is haunted more yes what's going on dude okay so <laughs> i was watching this and i couldn't watch the whole movie because i just kept like hearing things and like you know the dog the dogs all of a sudden got this like their hair stood up and they started like looking at the walls and started barking at the walls oh my like, god what the fuck and, <laughs> wow, and i'm like bro. okay i'm gonna change the channel i started watching that comedy show but but all of a sudden i hear this like scraping on on the ceiling and it's like what the <laughs> coming down the wall <laughs> Are you serious right I'm now? I'm serious. And then I'm, and then I look up and the bar, and the dogs are bark barking at at the ceiling and there's this balloon. And so this came out of like Everett's room and okay logically, right? I was stoned and I was like, "Oh my god." But logically, <laughs> logically like the, you know, the heater was on and I'm sure it was like blowing the the balloon, uh, you know, across the ceiling all the way to like literally where I was sitting. And I'm, but I'm like, that's so weird, dude. Like, I'm like, Ugh. so you didn't. Okay, so and I just looked at the balloon. I'm like, dude, like, ah, ah and I grabbed it and then popped it. So wow. I had a crazy. I don't know. Have you, I don't know how much you read about paranormal paranormal stuff, but uh, balloons are apparently. This is how Stop ghost it. hunters. I'm serious. Okay. One of the techniques they'll use to see if there's a spirit is they'll use balloons because for some reason, uh, especially evil spirits. I'm just trying to scare you. <laughs> I made it all. Something about, something about being <laughs> just, home, just face home, home, oh, home alone please. in the big old house like that and being yeah. high is probably, I, you know, it totally slipped my mind. But hearing you tell the story right now, I go, oh my God, there was, I called Katrina last night or I actually texted her first. I said, hey, call me later on. I got to tell you this scary story that happened to me. And she's like, what? What happened? What was the scary thing? I was like, oh, I said, so I'm downstairs. I, I would already smoked and I'm, I'm watching uh, watching TV and my um, my phone alerts. 
uh, that the temperature in Max's room has dropped. So I don't know if you guys know, like the Nanit camera will tell me if the temperature goes too high. Wait, did or it too get low. real cold real fast? Well, it wasn't like crazy, okay. and this happens all the time. And I keep the house really cold. I've so seen that in a movie so once. that ha I get the alert right, and I don't think anything of it. I'm like whatever. And then uh, it it go it vibrates and goes off again, and it says movement. I thought, oh, maybe the the door blew um, something open. I ignore it again. I don't think nothing of it because obviously I'm home alone, so I'm not even concerned. It go the alert goes off again, and so I click on it. And when I click on it, I get a a person and a body moving in front of the fuck camera. Fuck off! I Ooh. fuck yeah. off! My fucking heart jumps out of my chest before I realized that Katrina took the Nanit camera with her and that was her setting it up <laughs> oh. over in Truckee. <laughs> oh my God. Bro. Yeah, fuck such a off. dumb- in uh, house? Oh, yeah, I mean, it was only a moment before I put it together, so, but that moment, uh, I literally felt my, my heart jump out of my chest because I had already ignored it twice, and it, when I ignored it, I was already in my head going, oh, it's yeah. probably because I opened so the door. So when you're oh, in that state of mind, I swear, oh, like, yeah. so many things start kind of appearing oh. in your mind. You just I create didn't all even, this crazy it, stuff. It didn't even dawn on me. So, of course she took so the So how camera. weird is this, right? Let me ask you if this happens to you because uh, I, as a dad- I if my kids and my wife are in the house and I feel or see something like that, I act before I can think. And the way I act is very aggressively go after whatever it is. Right. right. So I've done this before. I did the same thing with the with the cameras. Yeah. Where I have two cameras. One was in the baby's room <clears throat> and one was in another room on uh, watch, looking at the playpen. And I mistook one for the other and I looked at it and I saw my son was gone. And I instinctively Yeah, yeah. I instinctively jumped to go run into yeah. the room, and then I realized what was going on. But if I'm alone- Did you grab your samurai sword? Yeah, dude. Okay. But if I'm alone, I'm more apt to leave. So if I'm by myself, <laughs> so, and I see some shit, I'm like, I'm out. So, so I had, that, I, like that? Yeah. I had the, the, I see the camera, so I'm, I'm, laying, I'm laying on the couch, and I have this, <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. This, this stance of, uh, do I go that way, or do I bolt Catch out the door? You know what I'm saying? Like, it literally was that <laughs> moment, and that was like, my heart started racing. Yeah. On what I was going to do, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, dude. And then it sat in. I realized it was Katrina, and she was up in Trucky, but dude, it, that it moment weird, though, got if, me. If you're by yourself, you're yeah. more... You guys, when you're with your... I don't know what it is. It takes over, and sure. I'm like, ah! You sure. know? It's totally opposite, though, when I'm yeah. by myself. Oh, yeah. Well, especially if I... Yeah, if I smoked at all. Like, I get... Like, I was locking all the doors. I was walking around the perimeter of the house. Oh, my times, God. Dude. What a bad idea. <laughs> Bro, I was just... And I was hearing, like, you know, nature, and, like, it was messing me up. Yeah, the scariest thing... One of the scariest things... So, first off spirits and shit like that never scared me at all and my my rationale was always well if i see an evil spirit well there's my ultimate proof that you know that shit exists and mm -hmm. that means god exists so i'm not scared of you huh? right so that's kind of like <laughs> my rationale about all that stuff uh not scared of intruders i have zero fear of an intruder I, if, if anything i'm gonna i'll go in and you know guns blazing it, the stupidest shit I'm, i get worried about aliens Oh, it's a kid thing. <laughs> really? Ever since I was a kid, dude. Ever really? since I was a kid. You get abducted? I don't know what it is. Ever since I was a child, I read all these alien books uh, and shit. That's well, so see, funny. that's why I meet me and spirits, dude, because I was like, you know, in church, I would like have to just sit there forever. And so I would go into the library and I was reading all these books yes. that, that were like all about like angels and demons. And like, I was really into that. Dude, did you guys ever watch that show? Uh, I don't remember the name of it. It was uh, a hidden camera. Oh, um, scare tactics. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. There was one. There was one episode. So scare tactics basically is there's actors. There's a real person that doesn't know that they're with actors. Yeah. They use special effects and all kinds of stuff to scare the shit out of someone. Yeah. I and probably saw this episode. Really scary. Say. There was one where they were like, I don't remember. I think they were in a Winnebago and uh -huh. they see a fucking uh, uh -huh. spaceship like land. <laughs> yeah. And and an alien. They see an alien. The guy freaks out. There's all actors in there, right? But except for one dude, and he's freaking out. Then they pulled the drapes open. There's an alien standing in the window. I swear to God, yes. I would have murdered everyone yeah. in the hole. I would have, I would have killed everyone. It's a joke. Fuck you. you know? Did you see the one where they had uh, this lady? She was like, um, she came in to kind of help out this like hospital setting or whatever. Oh, and giving birth. Giving birth. Oh, and that's and the best it's one. It's like come in and help, and we need this, and and the, <laughs> and this then one with the priest. Up, and then this little person comes out that was like dressed like a little dressed demon. like a little demon. <laughs> it was like. Ah! Have you like seen that one? Oh my god! This, this, this woman goes in. That she's she's in labor, and she's like, "This is so weird. I'm only three months pregnant." But she's obviously got a massive belly, and, so, yeah. and the and the girl working the front desk is like, three months pregnant." And then a priest comes in, looks like a priest, but actually looks kind of evil. I'm here to be with the you know the delivery or whatever. And she's like, uh, "And the doctor's like, yeah, let him in." Anyway, eventually shit goes crazy. She goes in. The doctor's like, "I need your help. Come in here." She goes in there. 
and they have a little person covered in blood but dressed up like a demon hiding under the, the table. <laughs> oh my God. And he jumps out like he just was born. Like, <laughs> I don't even care if you were in on it. Like, it was so freaky. Like, I would have been like, ah, yeah, I'm out of here. It's so hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey, I wanted to talk to you guys. So, we were, we had, one of our sponsors was supposed to mention in today's episode of Zbiotics, but I did want to bring up a downside. Of Z Bonnet. Maybe not the best commercial. <laughs> yeah, uh, gives you too maybe much share this on a non commercial uh, day. Going into it, or <laughs> you know it? what it is? What's the drawback? Is that uh, what prevents a lot of people from, especially fitness people, I'm one of them, from drinking alcohol is the shitty workouts the following day. <laughs> Mm. But I've gotten DMs from people who are like, you know, damn Zbiotics. I'm like, why? They're like, because I don't feel like shit the next day. So now I have a drink bef the, the day before. My I can get behind that. I mean, mm. I, I have drank more since we have had Zbiotic than I did the previous five years. Well, you just don't feel like you drank. Like yeah. I used to feel like shit. I'm like, forget it. I'm not going to do it. But well, the, cool, I don't part, like the cool part for me is that I, I couldn't even have, I, like the way my body reacts to alcohol, alcohol is I couldn't even have one or two drinks without it kind of ruining the next day for totally. me. Totally. Yeah. Just, that's how I respond until Zbiotics. Well, I've actually been able to drink wine which wine would give me horrible hangovers and so i just avoided it completely and and i just started uh having a glass if i'll go get a nice steak or something like i started to kind of incorporate that again if i had you know zbiotics because it, it didn't give me like because even just like a couple like let's say two drink glasses of wine like i would the next day just have like pounding headaches so yeah, yeah. so it is a downside man yeah, make, you, well, <laughs> make you want to drink did you more. guys see did you guys see uh, talking about since we're talking shit about supplements uh did you see Jordan Shallow answering questions this morning about no. okay so somebody asked him about the uh, creatine's cognitive boosting benefits and brain health yeah and he starts he go, I love when he goes on his rants he's like let's first ad address this whole like you know using creatine for the cognitive benefits of it he says why don't you go to go read a fucking book yeah <laughs> read a book pay your taxes pay attention to uh, sounds uh, like shallow well you know it, it there's the, here's the thing though and i and i what i love about him that there there is some really good truth to that yes yeah. and we talk about the studies that show like the benefits of that and i think that's just another thing that supports how great creatine is but he's so right that if you're really trying to you know boost cognitive function like you disciplining yourself to read let's say for 30 more minutes a day than you were previously before probably is going to give yes. you as good or more benefits Way more. yeah and so and, and then you get all the other great side effects of reading and learning right, right. so it, it's such a and we we are in this uh this time of where we're always looking for shortcuts and hacks and you know, it's like, God, that's such a good point that you're, if you're really seeking, and he kind of went on a rant that shit on like Alpha Brain and all these supplements and this marketing around like all the nootropics and everything. Mm. He's like, you know, there's so many things that you can do naturally that will, will boost Dude, cognitive function. I used to it's have like, this conversation with uh, people who would spend a lot of money on supplements, and you know, $250. I'm like, you know, you could hire a good trainer for three sessions. And in those three sessions, you'll get a hundred times more value value. Than you will with the yeah, two hundred fifty dollars. Wise. Way more. They'll, they'll they'll assess you. They'll show you how to do correctional exercise, and they'll at least give you a good workout, which is going to give you way better results than the pile of garbage you bought for two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. You know, I saw something else I wanted to to bring up and show you, Sal, because something that normally would not interest you, but I think you think is cool. So, uh, do you do you know who the the Ball brothers, Lamelo Ball, Lonzo mm -hmm. Ball, are? You don't know who they're I, basketball heard the players? Name, okay. Basketball. So the dad who's like really public and is always in their business, okay. and they're, they're they're three brothers that play ball. So Doug, pull up uh, um, um, Lamelo Ball uh, shoes, Puma, Puma shoes. So he signed a contract with Puma, and they did a collaboration with uh, Rick and Morty. So big, hell yeah, yeah, big NBA player. So this is kind of cool because it Love was that. Kobe who brought back. I want to say it was Kobe who brought back Adidas, like to because Nike has been dominant for so long, yeah. for, for so long. Yeah, Puma is and not then, a brand I would uh, see in the NBA, right? Ever. So so they just signed this other kid, Mikey, who's coming up and uh, he's in college right now, and I think he's going to be a star later on. Is it the blue and black ones there? The, those no, the the bright ones. Did you put in? No, go down, go down, Doug, go down, go down. Yeah, they're all the the hyper color ones. Oh, right there. And, see the oh, Rick yeah, and Morty. See the Rick and Morty. Morty? Uh -huh. Yeah. I just thought that was so. It's already interesting to me that uh, you know this this such a smart move um, by Puma doing this. Like Puma's got a pretty big name, like in soccer, I believe. Right? Yeah. Is that where they're probably most famous? I think so. Mm -hmm. So so Puma's got a pretty big name there. There, but they're I don't even Justin's think they they break the top totally. yeah, top three sneaker sales. 
Now, Adidas was like this with Nike. And then I believe it was Kobe who really broke Adidas back out and put them as a, like a true rival to Nike because before it was like Nike and then everybody else. And obviously signing Kobe was one of the biggest things that they they ever did. That's smart. This is really smart. Well, Rick and Morty has a cult following. That's what I'm, So that's yeah, why I think yeah. it's kind of a, kind of a unique collab. Um, but, I bet those shoes are going to be worth money. Oh, they are. I'm sure they already are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, especially if it's like the first, the first. Did you guys talk about the, did the Converse ever? Like, because I know, remember, well, Converse is the the original OG of basketball. Yeah, I yeah. know they had the high tops, which everybody wore. But um, I, I remember the only other time I remember it was like somewhat popular was Larry Johnson, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, they're like the black top ones. Yeah. 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 Well, like, you remember, uh, so and correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, maybe you can Google this for me real quick, but I'm pretty sure that Converse is owned by Nike now. So they it doesn't are, really yeah. matter. Oh. Right? So, oh. so they probably stay in their lane of like yeah. the whatever, type of demographic they go after whatever, and then they don't try and compete. Whatever happened to British Knights? Remember those? DK Knights. Yeah. Light up. Yeah. 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 Payless gear. shoes you could buy. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I see in some LA gears. Yeah. LA gear. Oh, uh, that was another one. Oh, my God. Do Reebok still do pumps? Is this still a thing? So I believe they brought like the pumps. Retro, I think yeah. they did bring the pumps back. As Man, like a, if you like were a, a kid in sixth grade with pumps on, you were yeah. You everybody wanted to do the. Ch -ch -ch. You were the man. So dude. you remember Reebok made the big move with Allen Iverson. That kind of brought them back on the map. So it's mm, kind of like this. Right. Yeah, I mean, if a, if a sneaker company makes the right call on the athlete, that's going to. At what point are e e athletes going to start? wearing shit and it's probably already happening oh, yeah we're just we're just not in that <clears throat> we're not in that click so we don't know i follow one of the most popular after we had that interview with um with uh our our boy mark master yeah thank you i don't know why names are slipping me it didn't have Could my organified pure right <laughs> so uh, we after we had that that Good interview dude. with him and we talked i started following like this kid that's from the bay area that's probably one of the more popular kids and they they they're already sponsored by stuff like that so I don't know what his his uh, if he has a sneaker line or not, but I mean that community is huge, and huge, growing. and yeah. extremely influential. Does your do you know, do you know if your son follows kids like that? He like, does. Is he he in, goes is he into on those kids. He what's that uh, Twitch? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. He'll go on Twitch. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't pay attention to the names, but I do notice that he'll watch like the same kind of people over and over again. Do you guys know who like one of the most famous Twitch guys is? The 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 doctor um uh Dr. Disrespect? No, I don't know. Yeah, Dr. Disrespect. He's hilarious. He dude. is. And he's he uh, he's like people. he's like our age. So yeah. he's he uh he, he I got, actually like him a lot. He yeah, won the blockbuster uh, like two years in a row, like 1980 or 1990 something. I can't remember. It was like the 80s or 90s, like blockbuster championship thing or whatever. Hilarious. Dude, because remember that movie with Fred Savage where he was playing like Mario yes. 3? Yes. And there he is. This was a thing way back you know, before it became esports. Oh, wow. Look at him. Yeah. So, my buddy is, who my, I have two friends that are still pretty hardcore in gaming. He's been talking about this guy for a long time. Same. Yeah. I have and I finally like on clicked him. on it to watch, like, I mean, this dude has, I mean, he puts a lot of, I mean, watch, you'll have a hard, I mean, I know you, you guys will have a hard time probably sticking with it, but he has like an eight minute intro into his like YouTube channel. Yeah. Like it's, and he's super dramatic when he gets in there. He taught, and he gets his name, Dr. Disrespect from talking shit to little kids. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I like him there. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. punking everybody. And he's funny dude. and he's got the whole mullet going yeah. on and stuff. So he's, and he's a big old tall dude. I think he's like six, six, eight or some shit. He's hella tall. Oh, hella. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so I want to ask you, Adam, when uh, Katrina weaned Max off of uh, breastfeeding, mm -hmm. was he still obsessed with her boobs? Was there like a thing there? Oh, he still is. So okay, still, yeah, still this day is he'll cracking he'll, me up right now. Yeah. Oh, bro, it's if she wears <laughs> any at any kind of shirt at all, that's low cut ish. It doesn't even have to be crazy. Low cut ish. He shows his face in there. Ah. Obsessed. <laughs> Obsessed. He wants to sit on, look at him. He kiss him. He well, isn't that? Is he hugs him. He pats on him. Ta, 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 ta. And I want. I'm like, man. I'm like cracking up. I'm like, what? Is, he goes like this. He'll. Like, He'll pat on them. <laughs> t -t 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 -t. Playing the he'll, congas. Yeah. He'll squeeze yeah. them. He'll hug them, kiss them. I'm like, did we, what did you do to my son? Like, is he going to have a weird fetish when he grows up? Well, is, <laughs> is, is Freud's theory on that? Is that still the prevailing theory? Or has that been disproven as far as like a man's fascination with boob is all from our childhood? Well, is that, the, is that true? Or uh, that's you know? one, I mean, that's part of the theory. The other, the other, because female man. humans are the only, one of the only mammals. That always have breasts. So other mammals, they'll, 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 their breasts will only engorge, engorge when they're best feeding and then back. go away. Yeah. Female mammals, we, uh, humans, excuse me, have boobs all the time. And they think it's because we've sexualized them. So because we stand upright, 
are visible signs of arousal or whatever are not as evident. And so they say, well, we, that's probably why we developed having boobs all the time. It's, it, was a, it also became a sexual thing, not just for function. Oh, okay. So, but he's, he, he, bro, I'm telling you, he's, he, he's funny about it. Pats on him, play, hugs him, does, and I just watch him be like, this, what's going to happen when he grows? I hope he gets over this. <laughs> it's going to be weird, yeah. bro. I don't think, I don't this think they do, bro. So Max, dude, I don't think they do. Ma yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made a massive imprint. Yeah, yeah but Max is almost kind of weird. Like oh that. yeah, no, he's still he is even with me. So I I take baths with him still all the time, right? And he, when we do, at one point in the bath, he you know he'll be playing, and then all of a sudden, like I'll I'll like come up, and my my chest will come out of the water, and it will always stop him cold in his tracks, and he's got to come over and grab me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I just look at him like, bro, what are you doing? I'm just yeah. like, come on, <laughs> like these don't work. Yeah, yeah. He, he's definitely he's fast. These, these are pecs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are not like moms. This bro. is a big, this not is a big like difference. moms at all. Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> so, do you guys, uh, do you guys see? Uh, I guess a new report came out: inflation going up uh, faster than they thought. Uh, of course, yeah. it's always a surprise. Right, Fourteen by the way. basis yeah. points it jumped, and they, they think who, who could have predicted? They think I know. It's so funny. We would we we can never guess. This is so weird. Anyway. They're they're talking about hiking rates like some uh, maybe up to ten times uh, are, this year. Are they still trying to promote it like it's a good thing? No, now I think they're starting to. Uh, so I think that I think the the consensus is more like five. So the original prediction was like three uh, three hikes at like a you know fifty basis points total or some shit like that. I was literally just listening to the or my real estate news stuff this morning and they and they said. Now it's looking more like five, uh, five uh, hikes over the course of the year. They think it's probably going to land somewhere in the mid fours to high fours is where we'll probably end up, which still technically inflation is- Inflation is still going to be double or triple that, so- <sighs> Yeah, no, I mean- It's like the, too little, too late. Uh, yeah, no, and the market's still going. I mean, it's the real estate- You know what, speaking of the real- the, Also, what I was listening to that is fascinating the shit out of me is- any guesses on how much real estate was sold last year in the metaverse and what it's predicted to do this year? Oh, don't tell me. It's going crazy. So From Oct like October, remember October was when the announcement of Meta happened, right? So, right. Once, so since that in October, it's gone up like ninefold. Okay. But so, and that is in October. So closing out last year, a half a billion dollars sold in real estate in the metaverse the prediction is for that to at least double this year already closing in january was almost a hundred million dollars in real estate in in the virtual so let me ask you this adam where would we buy because make believe part, so part there's houses. four there's four popular uh decentraland um sandbox and then the other two are going to slip me right now but there's okay. four major areas in met the metaverse right now that are selling the most real estate. And now what's like, going to be in those areas of the metaverse? Why are so, they so, why are they So desirable? different ones have different things. Like I believe, you know, Nike is in one of them and then you have people like- So the idea is you own a piece of property there and there's going to be other things that are going to attract people to go to this online and then you own a p piece of yeah. property. To be it. honest with you guys, I, the, I sent you guys a link today to listen to it because I want you to listen to it because it, it's very speculative. It would be gambling for sure to do this. But the prediction on how fat, well, not only the prediction, but what is how fast that that real estate is going up from just like six months ago, and the prediction on how much it's going to go up, you know, we can buy we can buy a piece of land that's by like Nike or one of these big like a theme parks that are being built in there for for relatively cheap. I mean, you've heard some record ones being sold yeah. for like in the million, but you can get like a a lot for like twelve, fifteen thousand dollars. I was just gonna say you can you can get a home loan, right, right, <laughs> right. So. It. Uh, I mean, it would be a little bit of a gamble, but it's not like we haven't gambled well, on I stocks think, or other things like yeah, that. Buy and it, it and leave it and see. And then, you, but I wouldn't leave it for too long. I would ride the wave on the prediction of thirty to fifty percent growth, and yeah. then I would flip it and sell it because the other, the, you know, the people that are skeptical, as I am, is it's more like a Ponzi scheme, and there's going to be a lot of people that make a lot of money on the way, mm -hmm. and then the last one out is who's going to get agree. the most. Yeah, fucked. They're going to weed be everybody out. I well, agree. and here's why. Here's why I'm most skeptical about it is that. What is on your plot of land or what your, uh, you know, metaverse real estate provides as far as like what you can do in it yeah, value is where the real value is yes. because it's the metaverse. So well, I could be in Nike land shopping with my friends. We're like, oh my God, this is so much fun. Let's go to Justin's house. Yeah. And, the, and Justin being next door to Nike or being in a it's whole nother metaverse, <laughs> yeah. which is infinite, yeah. is it's you, you transport. 
instantly. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like if you've ever played a video game yeah, where you matter. go, for, it doesn't matter. No. Nope. So the so this idea of like location, 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 which really matters in the real world because if you walk out of the Nike store in San Francisco, and if you don't, if Justin's house isn't right next door, you're right. not going to go to Justin's house because you have to drive an hour and a half in traffic yeah. to get there. So well, you, you know I, I, I could see the value though being because I'm visiting this Nike land and I'm already there and I'm walking by your billboard or your business. So like advertising, I could see the value. So, the, I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, there, but okay. So I'm trying to picture this also from like a player one perspective. Like, you know how they had like different worlds that were like themed. That's right. Uh, and so what's, what's to say, like, they're not just going to create another planet or something well, that's what's going, okay, where so it's like, you're going to go over here. So who they cares can. about Doug, look up the four most popular, uh, Locations in the metaverse, Mot meta worlds, you would say, maybe meta or worlds, yeah, in the metaverse and I, uh, Decentraland, uh, Sandbox, and then there's two other that are like the four most popular. Were yeah. okay, most so those are providing real estate right now for you to purchase within it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now yeah. that I could see something like that, but I I agree with you, Adam. I think buying something in there and allowing all the speculation to come in, raise the price of it, and then getting out would be smart because. First off, even if, if, okay, even if, yes, it's true, you own a piece of whatever property in this space that people go to, you're also betting on the fact that this particular space is going to be really popular mm -hmm. in five or 10 years. We all know when it comes to tech and entertainment, it's a, it's always a gamble. It's still a gamble. Even Re if it's a great product, some other product could be much more popular. Read me the four, Doug. Crypto voxels. Okay. Decentraland. Okay. The Sandbox. Yeah. Somnium space. Now, are all these in the meta? So Facebook's sort of version of that, because isn't no, like yeah, no. Microsoft have their own too. So no, so the, Facebook does not own the metaverse. Their company name is Meta, which is probably why their their play on that is to try and capture Kleenex, the branding. Yeah, know, exactly, very very exactly thing. like that. But they don't own the metaverse. The metaverse, you we can all we could create our own world. We can make a mind pump world mm. and we could, you know Justin's cheese land. Yeah, yeah, you could so, so they don't they bath. don't have you know, they don't have like a monopoly in there whatsoever. They're just a there's just they're gonna be just another place uh in this and it's infinite. So the the re that's another reason why the real estate thing is so speculative is because it's like, dude, you could you never yeah, one run of these out lands of land. Could, nobody nobody might want to visit Somnium Space or something or whatever. Well and and you know at one point, what will make these places, uh, you know, desirable for people to go to is what is on your piece of land or what it, what you can do in it. That's yes. so cool. Yeah, and yeah so, it's gonna be unique. So yeah, so you so you can buy this land and then you obviously need a coder to develop it because you have to write code to now develop whatever you oh, want. Oh, so on we it. buy property, then we have to develop on it. That's or? we don't have to. You could just sit on it and then because that's how I would I would just sit on it yeah. like you were saying, and I would just ride the the. What the, if we oh. bought What if we bought a piece of land? or whatever you want to call it in this metaverse, whatever. And then on there is literally just a screen playing our podcast. That'd I mean, it's, cool. it's not a bad, it's not a bad idea why we're, if it wasn't that expensive to do that, yeah. really the only reason why I would do it would literally to ride the Speculate, wave. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you you know that it's, it's going to get cr crazier and crazier over the next year or mm -hmm. two at least. And so it would be an in and out deal for yeah, me. Yeah, first one's in. Yeah, first get it, get in. in, get in one of these four popular places where everybody's yeah. buying and flipping and stuff like that. Sit on it for a little bit and then and then get out That's of cool. it in like a year. Hey, uh, mm -hmm. I learned some, some cool science yesterday. I wanted to bring up. Did you guys know that eight percent of people don't get cavities? So ninety two percent of everybody gets cavities. But there's eight percent who Are just they all don't. All Italians or who just no. <laughs> what? I, what? Know, what? I told you my you stepdad never had one in his entire life. life. Yeah. Well, no. I so I've never had a cavity. Um, in fact, I went to the dentist and I, uh, you know, full disclosure, never go to the dentist. And I went and the dentist is looking at my and she's like, "When's the last time you came?" I'm like, oh, I don't even know. Ten it's years been a long ago. time. And she's looking. She goes, "Your teeth." She goes, "You don't have a single cavity." I said, "Yeah, I don't. I just I've never had one my whole life." And my dad's like that. Mm -hmm. And my dad grew up so poor. He didn't have a toothbrush when he was a kid at all. <laughs> Literally, he tells me how he used to wake up in the morning and he would take his finger and like wipe his teeth with water. And, he, and the first time he went to a dentist, he was in his 20s because he moved to America. And the dentist did not believe that he'd never been to a dentist, never had braces and all that stuff. Yeah. But they, I read about this and apparently it's the microbiome of the mouth yeah. that some people have a, bac like a, a bacterial profile in their mouth that just prevents any kind of cavities from developing. Well, I thought that all, was fascinating. I, I, I imagine it has to help, too, that you have a really good diet. 
Diet like, so, plays a role, yes. Because I've been I've been yeah. that way for most of my life. I now have a cavity, and it's completely because of the rock stars. Yeah. yeah. Because it, the, the acid has it's now the eaten away at the enamel on my teeth, and then now uh, stuff gets down in there, and that's where the cavity so, happens. So I read about that, and yes, diet plays a role, but the way the reason why it plays a role is because particular types of diets promote certain types of bacterial profiles in your mouth. Sure. And that's what causes the cavity. I think, well, sugar, right? That's like one of the biggest- Sugar is one. Grains is another one. Yep. So I thought that was very fascinating. I did not know that there was uh, a percent- Because I know myself, and I was always been kind of a mystery, because my sister, my siblings are not like that. Well, my sister in particular- Well, she I was wondering, because I didn't really get cavities until like I had really bad like grinding at night with my teeth. Mm. So then it was almost like uh, anything I ate would affect. It was like more sensitive, and then yeah. it just over time- would, that's, would just, rot that's just out. keeping what's, your emotions inside. Justin. What I think is really, <laughs> what's, what I didn't the know until it happened to me also is that the, the your cavities can heal. Yes, naturally. Mm -hmm. So I me I remember the last time that I had went to the dentist before this time, and it was the rock stars that I was drinking back then, and my dentist was like, "Cut them out," and I cut them out. By the when I came and visit came back and visited them again, completely gone. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, it can heal too. So a lot of people think, oh, I got a cavity. You have to go get it fixed. It's no. like, well, if you have something that you're doing in your diet that you know could be a, a major offender, you fix that and then you can yeah. totally fix the cavity. One thing that annoys me though a little bit about dentists is the everybody needs to get their wisdom teeth out deal. Bro, it's um, such a scam and hustle. I think some I know people- I'm gonna, I know I'm going to piss off dentists, I right? So I, I always piss people I off. I think some that, people but. definitely- so, like, I've never had my wisdom teeth pulled out. And yeah. every time I go, they're like, well, you sure? You don't want to- like for what? Why? Yeah. They work just fine. My mouth was obviously big enough to hold all my teeth. So <laughs> <laughs> no argument here. No argument there. <laughs> but that that part annoys me a little bit is the it reminds me of the tonsil thing, which now has changed. But yeah, back I was in the just day bring that up, yeah. Back in the day, you, you oh well, repeated sore throats, take out the tonsils. Just take take them out. out the tonsil. Yeah, that and that, well like now they have too like this hustle on like levels of cleaning too. So I just went and paid to get a, a big old oh, deep, cleaning. deep cleaning. They go and, and then there's like a super up. deep cleaning yeah. that's like even even more crazy. And then and then it's like, of course, you know, thousand bucks or whatever. So it just yeah. keeps they got all these little features that they can add yeah, now that make a ton of money. So I'm just like, <laughs> you sound uh, like I'm so skeptical. You sound bro. like my, like I have like uncles that are like they're they're conspiracy theories about anything medical. My grandfather's like this. In fact, you go to the doctor, and the doctor will say, "You need to do this." And he comes back, and like, "Did you take? Did you get the medicine?" Is yeah. it? No, they just want my money. Well, like, I, no, no, that's I, not what I that tell was you, like. the, the, I mean, I'm sharing my my latest or most recent experiences, but I had these experiences as a kid. I remember because we didn't have a lot of money, so we didn't go to the dentist that often. And I remember one time going in there and having like six cavities, and then my parents couldn't afford to fix it. So like years later, I go back and I have none. So, I mean, it, you, it, I've had situations like that of having multiple times yeah. with dentists where I'm getting quoted that I'm going to need to spend thousands of dollars yeah. on my teeth, can't do, afford to do anything about it, time goes by, and then I go back again and, oh, you're totally fine, and then again, here I am later on in my life, same thing happens again, or, oh, you have cavities, oh, get rid of the rock stars, oh, it totally heals and sure, goes back, sure. and so I'm just really skeptical of... You know, just, okay, sign me up. Well, I'll there is a little bit of that. I used to train a, a dental surgeon, and he did tell me that sometimes they will say certain things that they say you need to get done, but you really don't. And so he said, you know, make sure you have a good, uh, you know, good dentist. I know. So that's my, the dentist I had before this one was a client, a friend of mine. And so, so you trusted them. Yeah. And she, she was the one that told me to just cut the rock stars out for a little bit, then we'll check back yeah. up on you. Where this new dentist I have is not a friend or anybody I know. And they're like, oh, yeah, we could do this. And then I'm on my way out, like, oh, no, 1,800 more bucks. We'll see you next week. I'm like, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> God, <suckers>. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hey, one of the sponsors we've worked with the longest is Organifi, and there's a reason for that. They're one of the best supplement companies around. We love them because they have a lot of integrity and great products. Many of them are plant-based for better health. For example, the protein powder is vegan, so it's very easy to digest, but it has a combination of different vegan sources, so you have a good amino acid profile. That means that this protein powder builds more muscle than other vegan protein powders. They also have a green juice, which is great for health and recovery, a gold juice, this is great for relaxation and sleep, and a red juice that's good for energy and stamina and endurance. Go check out Organifi. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on Organifi, use the code MINDPUMP for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Greg from New York. What's up, Greg? How can we help you? Hey guys, how you doing? Good. All right. Good. Thank you for uh, for taking my call and uh, all the uh, knowledge you guys put out there for us. Yeah, good deal. How can Thank we help you. you, man? 
All right. So i um, 47. I had uh, gastric bypass surgery. Actually, I had gastric sleeve surgery in September. Um, down almost 90 pounds now. I've been going to the gym since as soon as I got clearance, which was uh, late October. Um, I'm just at a point now I just want to try to build as much muscle without, you know, burn as much fat without losing the muscle because that's where I could see the difference. I could see it, you know, the arms are shrinking, everything shrink. You know, my arms are looking smaller because I'm losing so much fat, but I want to burn that muscle, but I also want to increase my cardio uh, so I can do things like go ride a bike for 40 miles if I want to. So I was just trying to find the best thing I've done. You know, when I was training, when I was younger, it was all based on that old Arnold Schwarzenegger book, you know, the Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. It's and a great book. Things have changed so much since then. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the focus – now, before you had the surgery, were you active at all? I was fairly active. My job actually has me in the in the field a lot, so there are days I would, you know, go walk or four, you know, walk up four or five-story buildings. Yeah. And so walk let's, talk, let's, let's talk about the conflicting goals first. Yeah, well, so, so Greg yeah. – so I, I've worked with um, quite a few people who've had gastric sleeve or gastric bypass uh, procedures. So have I. And the, the weight loss is fast and furious, but the, the challenge is how do we – is is the psychological challenge I should say is I'm losing weight quickly so I want to do everything else fast as well don't do that you want to take your time allow your body to build itself up the most important thing you can do right now is build muscle and strength it's more important than anything else because the challenge is going to be not losing muscle and not having a big metabolism <clears throat> slowdown so the majority of your your workouts should center around strength training two or three days a week full body Focus on getting stronger. Train with perfect form. Don't train to failure. Train, of course, with appropriate, you know, good technique. And start there. As far as stamina is concerned, I would just stick to walking for now. And I wouldn't push the cardio until the strength and muscle start to feel quite substantial. You got to give yourself some time because what's going to happen is you're going to lose all the weight very quickly, right? So if you've already lost, you said, 90 pounds. Right. You're going to keep losing very fast. And that's going to make you want to kick it into gear with more and more activity well especially in his situation yeah. where I'm, I'm sure he's very low calorie and you're also uh mm. if you start doing something like an endurance sport uh your your body's just going to pare down muscle it's it's just, it's already doing that yeah it's doing that already right. so you you're are you're already like a challenge client with when it comes to holding on to muscle mm. uh greg do you have maps anabolic uh, no, I don't. Okay, we're gonna send that to you because that's exactly, uh, right. yeah, that's exactly what I have you. And then, are you working with a nutritionist? Um, the hospital had given me one that we had to speak to, but I'm not. I wasn't crazy about her, so I haven't been working with a nutritionist you, on my own now. Are you able to find another one? Um, I was gonna look, start looking around and try to find one, you know, locally that I could speak to. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I would, con I would continue working with um, uh, somebody who's gonna help you with nutrition. But you need to focus on building muscle. I wouldn't focus on anything yeah. else right now. Yep. And give yourself some time. The The fat loss is happening quickly, mm -hmm. but right. the fitness gains, the strength gains, the body composition changes, aside from fat loss, are going to happen much slower. So don't confuse the two, right? Don't confuse the fast weight loss with, oh my God, I'm uh, everything's progressing so quickly. It's not really the same thing. The, the quick weight loss is coming from the dramatic reduction in calories. Sure, but right. the, the fitness is going to take some time. If you do this right, you're going to dramatically improve your ability to maintain these results and not get a lot of the negative effects that some people get from uh, you know, these types of procedures. If you try to drive it even faster with excessive cardio, lots of calorie burn, that kind of stuff, you're going to amplify the negative side effects and increase your risk of gaining the weight back later on. And it is possible. Here's another thing, too. There's a big myth that you know getting these procedures – results in, in permanent weight loss. It's not the case. I've, I've seen uh, several people gain the weight back afterwards through you know actually pushing these kind of bad behaviors. So focus on strength and muscle. That should be your primary focus right now. And then for activity, just stick to walking. That's 100% where I would go. And Adam talked about MAPS Anabolic. That's the perfect program. Follow uh, that perfect. one for yeah. now. Yeah, totally. Because yeah, like I would do like ten, we could do like 10 minutes on the treadmill before I work out and maybe 10, 15 minutes on the bike afterwards. Um, so I didn't want to, I don't want to push it too much. I am supposed to ride a 40 mile five borough bike tour in May. So I was kind of trying to, why? Prepare for that. Yeah, do, we why, have, why, Greg, do we have to do that? Yeah. Why, why'd you do, why'd you sign up for that? 
I just signed up. It was a bunch of people who were signing up together, so it was just something a yeah. goal. Gr- to, to hey, Greg, work. if you're my client, I, I if you were my client and you allowed me to direct you, I'd say no. Hey, Greg, I'm going to pretend oh. like I'm your mom right now, right? If all your, <laughs> if all your friends signed up to jump off a bridge, would you do the same? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, don't just, do it, Greg. Just not now. Just not now. It's not that we can't in the future. It's that right. what is best for you right now is like what Sal said is to completely focus on building muscle. You are going to lose body fat. That is happening. Like and it's happening very fast. And and you focusing on building muscle until you get to a place where you're very content and happy with like your weight, with your muscle mass, then we could talk about setting like cardio type goals. But okay. trying to do that while you're also trying not to lose yeah. muscle is going to be sending a competing signal. And it's even more important with you than the average person because I know that your calorie intake mm-hmm. is so low. And that's part of why the weight is coming off so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Don't sign up for any events because, okay, so here's yeah. here's something that's happening right now, Greg. And I, I understand this. I, like I said, Put I've, in the form too, by the way. I've, I've gone through this myself at times, and I've also seen lots of clients go through this. Because you you made the decision to get the surgery, and I'm assuming that was a, a decision you thought out, you, you, you was very thoughtful, right? You thought about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, a long time I thought about it, yeah. You, exactly. You pondered it. I mean, surgery is a big decision. So you did that. You finally did it. So you made that step. You're now seeing lots of weight loss. You're in a very motivated state of mind, and your state of mind is going to make you want to sign up for races, marathons, bike rides. Right. You're going to want to do a bunch of crazy stuff. Fight the urge. Pretend like you're in your normal state of mind. Whatever you're going to do now is what you're going to have to do forever. The, the racing is a, it's the worst possible mm-hmm. thing you can sign up for right now. I would stay away from all that stuff. Give yourself a year or two yeah. of slowly right. you building build your body. the body. Yeah, to just focus on whatever is going to promote. Yeah, it's, not, it's not a race. It's just like a tour. Yeah, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. I understand. Doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. you're, you're going to look. Yeah. When's the last time I ask you a question? When's the last time you rode 40 miles on a bike? Probably about five years ago when I tried it once before and I made it like 30 miles before I had. Yeah, Excessive fuck, weight fuck that, Greg. You're not allowed to do that. No, right. so put, it, put it, put it, put it, put him in the forum too, Doug. Greg, are you on Facebook? Yes. Okay, do me a favor and and request access to the Mind Pump private forum. We're gonna give you free access okay. to that too, and I'm gonna. I want to keep an eye on you. I don't trust. I don't trust you're not going to sign up for some crazy shit in the next year. You're going to start feeling. No, that was the only thing I had planned. <laughs> okay, all yeah. right. And I and I, I would love to hear you check in with us. Just let us know how your progress is doing. If you if you comment in the forum, you tag one of us or all of us. We'll we'll, we'll make sure we see the post. We'll interact with you and, and any help that we can give you along your path. I really want to keep an eye on you as you go through this because I know I like Sal. I've trained a lot of clients. And this is all three of us have because we all mm-hmm. worked at a, a gym that was directly across from a place that did these surgeries. So very, very familiar with training clients in your case. And we just want to help you out as much as we can. Yeah. So and by, by the way, touch. with with MAPS Anabolic, there's a pre-phase. I want you to do the pre-phase for about three or four months before you move to phase one, okay? Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know this is just the tool and it's not something that's – I know it can come back. I'm, You know, I have that, that mindset. So yeah. I know this is just the tool to help me get where I need to be. So, but I appreciate all the help and all the uh, the tools you guys are going to help yeah, me. Yeah, with. That's and, right. You and, got us. Yeah, and congratulations, man. You're, you're yeah, already doing you. a great job. You know, just all you got to yeah. do is temper yourself, be kind to yourself, and think of yeah. like you're building a really good house, and it starts with a really good long foundation. Long term. Think long term now. Right. Right. All right. All right, Greg. Th- we'll, thanks for calling we'll, in. Yeah. We'll see you in the I forum, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. I'm just going to guess because his name is Greg and his accent. He's Italian. I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> He's from, uh, what, Staten New York, Island, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know, you can tell. You appreciate me cussing out of him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, can, yeah, you give him the real deal. That's why I told him. I said, I'm going to be yeah. like your mom because yeah. I know you listen to your mom. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, no, you know, it, this, you know what's tough about this is like once you finally make that decision and you see this stuff happening, you want to jump on everything. And yeah. so it makes sense that he signed up for a 40-mile ride, and it makes sense that he's like, I want to do everything possible to make this right. happen even faster. Yeah, you're seeing all this progress. I yeah. mean, it is motivating. But, yeah, to be able to pull yourself back and just try and restore and, and, and build the body right now, yep. that's everything. Yeah. You know, we didn't we didn't address this part either because it, it didn't come up as a concern from him, but a lot, I, this does become a concern, whether it's now or later, is when you lose that much, the, the loose skin. 
one of the things that will mitigate how much loose skin you have, it's inevitable you're going to because you drop so fast, yeah. but building muscle right now and focused on that. It'll help. Yeah, it'll definitely help. Yeah, it'll yeah. help mm -hmm. versus if you were to get on cardio and, and lose even faster than yeah. what you're already oh, losing, yeah. then you're, you're, then the loose skin is going to accelerate. It's yeah. right. Even worse. Right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, totally. But yeah, building is because the, the other thing too, to consider with something like this is nutrient deficiencies. Your body's absorbing nutrients differently supplementation becomes more important. So yeah. I'm glad you brought up the dietitian because oh, yeah. uh, that's very important because you can lose lots of weight, but you're now you're not absorbing nutrients the way you were before. And you often see nutrient deficiencies as a result. Our next caller is James from Pennsylvania. What's up, James? How can we help you? Hey guys. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you all for uh, taking my call. Um, so I have a couple questions. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm sure they're not unique to me that I fall into a category of people that that, that all have the same thing they're dealing with. Um, so I've been relatively athletic my whole life. I started wrestling seventh grade or so, um, been weightlifting for about 25 years, um, spent most, most of my life in public service, uh, spent six years in the Marine Corps, and I'm currently in law enforcement. Um, so my fitness goals have been primarily performance driven. I've done very little uh, to focus on aesthetics or anything else like that. Um, and then on top of that, I do jujitsu and I know that, uh, Sal's a purple belt and he's got a, uh, a, a background in this as well. I was, so I knew it was going to come up. So I thought I was going <laughs> to, you can see how to get that out of the way. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. James, you yeah, said yeah, it just, first. Just throw it out there. Yeah, yeah. Adam and um, Justin are white belts. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't that, so, so I, I'm trying to do BJJ about two to three times a week because for, for my work, I find it to be something that's really imperative for managing stress of, of physical conflict when I'm trying to take somebody into custody that doesn't really want to be. Um, and, you know, those skills and stress management have, you know, helped me a lot. Um, so, so, so to me, it's more than just a hobby. It, it's, it's something that's really important to, you know, my longevity in the career and the, and the people that I serve. Um, so that's kind of my big rock that I'm focusing on right now. Um, so what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm trying to figure out my approach for continuing fitness training um, uh, to supplement jujitsu, to supplement my work, um, you know, because for me, it, it's it's all about performance and, and, and what it looks like. It's 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 go. It, it's go, not show. Um, then on top of that, my wife and I do a lot of hiking and um, backpacking and we're going to the Grand Canyon in a couple months and we're going to hike out there for a week. And so I need to, you know, keep up my stamina and my endurance and all of those things as well. So I just wanted to get your take on it and see what you think. Yeah, no, good question. First off, yeah. I, uh, I want to thank you for your service. Yeah, we really appreciate law enforcement. The work I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So jujitsu two to three days a week, right? Um, That's my goal. Okay. If you're doing jujitsu two days a week, you can probably get away with two days a week of, of resistance training. If you're doing three days a week, it would be one day a week of resistance training. It's, uh, hmm. it's a, it's a trap we tend to fall into where we want to be able to work out all the time. I know how, yeah. I know how demanding jujitsu is. I'm assuming your, your classes are probably two to two and a half hours long. Is that correct? No. So these classes, they're roughly an hour to hour and a half. How, how long is the sparring session? The sparring usually, session? yeah, usually 20 to 30 minutes at the end. Okay. That's okay. not too, too bad. I still stick yeah. to what I say. I'd go, if you're doing three days a week of jujitsu, one day a week of resistance training or two days a week too. So four days a week total of structured exercise. As far as your workouts are concerned, you can keep it really basic um, and focus on four or five traditional exercises or MAPS performance. The mm -hmm. workouts and MAPS performance that's would be very complimentary. That's where I was going to push it. Yeah. MAPS performance. And then if you were going to add any more to it, it would be some of the mobility days, I think would comp complement what he's doing phenomenal. Yeah, I oh, think definitely. You'd, you'd be perfect doing that. Because I, I know jujitsu okay. would be really demanding again. And so I think sometimes we're tempted to throw more workouts on it. It took me a while to learn this lesson. I was in my 20s. And I had to really scale back on my strength training in order to uh, really improve my performance in jujitsu. I was just doing too much. Yeah. But yeah, you can. Gotcha. We'll, we'll, if you don't have mass performance, we'll send it to you. And what you no, want? I've do got is, it. I appreciate that though. Oh, perfect. Go. So pick the foundational workouts in there and use those as your workouts and the mo mobility sessions you could do every day if you want. Yeah. I really think okay. mass performance is your hub. And, and so based on what your performance goals are and like keeping up with, uh, you know, all the movement and all the, uh, you know, strength and demands, like I, 
if I were to stack this out and like uh, put it together, it'd be like mass performance. We go into like something like an anabolic or uh, even aesthetic and then go into strong and then sort of repeat that cycle is something that I would probably, you know, you could almost do that as, as more of a focus on performance or even, I don't know. What do you guys think he could, about he that? Could, he uh, could be, I would, power lift. I would leave him indefinitely in performance with these goals. His, his goal is primarily related to performance, his job and BJJ. So to yeah. me, that would be the center. And then performance is really to complement what he's doing. And so to me, it really looks like mass performance ran over and over yeah. right now, either one to two days a week. And I would just, and I would dictate one to two days a week based off of the volume of either Brazil, your jujitsu and, or whatever you're doing. Like if you're doing hikes, like let's say it's a week and maybe you only get to BJJ one time that week. Okay. Well then, you know, maybe we do two times of performance that week and then in a mobility day or something, yeah. or let's say it's a high volume day of, or a week of uh, BJJ and you do three times that week and it was intense. And maybe you also did like a hike with your wife on the weekend. I mean, I'm only going to let you do performance one time that week. So you have the ability to kind of mold it around what else you're doing, but it would, it would bounce between either one day a week or two days a week and do your best to be objective with yourself and go like, okay, am I, did I, am I just overreaching a little bit or am I giving my body just what it needs? And what, what you should see is really good progress in the gym and, and let that be your guiding, your guiding star, right? If you see yourself regressing in weight and you've been consistent with your, you know, training and eating, maybe you're doing too much. If, uh, it, so you can kind of play with that back and forth between the one to two days a week based off of what you're seeing as far yeah. as your return. Well, Justin brought up map strong, you know, map strong would actually be really good for jujitsu as well. Do you have map? Strong? Yeah. I want to give you something for free. Do you have map strong? I do. Unfortunately, I've got like all of your guys' stuff. So wow. I appreciate it, though. Hey, that's no, great, nothing man. unfortunate about well, that. Well, we want to <laughs> draw it out for like a year. You know? like, figure <laughs> well, it out. Yeah, I, so and that's and that's part of my problem. It's like I look at everything. I'm like, yeah, that's it. No, that's what I want to do. And yeah. and I get a little ADD on on my programming. Yeah. And and then on top of that, I have a little bit of like body dysmorphia. So I'm never quite where I want to be. Um, so. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah, no, so strong, strong and performance yeah. will both be good. And, and you know, here, here's the thing, too, with the training that you're doing. You got to think – there's two things I want you to consider. I want you to, A, consider am I able to do my job while I'm training this way, okay? Because right. y you know that your job is probably made up of a lot of boring and then every once in a while real intense, hard, physical shit, right? Exactly. So, so what you don't want to do is push yourself to the limit. So if you were a jiu-jitsu athlete, you could push yourself to the limit all the time because the, then you're, the rest of the day you're sitting at a desk on a computer or something. But you don't right. have that capability. you got to keep yourself safe. So right. think to yourself, can I also do my job while I'm doing this training week in and week out? So that's number one. And then number two – Consider that this is long term because you might be able to get mm -hmm. you might be able to get away with you know more resistance training and more jujitsu all at once, but you're not going to be able to get away with that for that long. And you might be able to tolerate it, but that doesn't mean it's ideal for you. So, looking sure. at that's why I said to you, you know, if you do jujitsu, you know, three days a week, you're only going to lift once. You might mm -hmm. be able to do more, but I don't think it'll put you in a good position for your daily work. Nor will it be a, a good long term yeah, approach. Just monitor that and scale your volume accordingly, based on how your body responds and, and gives you feedback. Not to mention, your main goal is performance. And I'll tell you right now, if you're doing yeah. jujitsu three times a week and doing a foundational day or two a week, and you're gonna you're gonna be fit, you're gonna be strong, you're gonna be able to perform just like you want. So if that's what your goal is, like I think you can yeah, achieve that through that. And here's the thing too. So now that I know you have all the programs. You're obviously familiar uh, with the stuff that we talk about. You know, although we recommend everybody, you know, go through all the programs exactly how we've written so you can kind of experience it, we, we've always encouraged people to be able to mold. There is nothing that says you can't run, you know, one day a week of performance for a few months and then you run strong for a month or two and mm -hmm. pull, you know, if there's certain workouts in there or movements, like I love strong because there's things like the circus press that I really like. And, mm -hmm. you know, exercises that we haven't programmed snatch in other programs. Yeah, yeah. Snatch grip deadlifts. There's some neat movements Carry. that I, I like. There's nothing that, that says you can't kind of bounce between those. Uh, and, and you, you can do that. Like we wrote them for people so they don't have to do that. But if you feel mm -hmm. confident in your ability to kind of read like how how you're pushing yourself, you could absolutely, you know, interchange some of those those workouts if you if you want to follow one of them for a couple of weeks or a month and then switch to yeah. another program. Now, James, I also noticed Got in your it. question, you in the question that you wrote and sent into us that you talked about being on TRT. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about that? 
Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. How, now, how long have you been doing that? So that's been about a year. So, so what happened with me was, um, I was, I was working in, in an area that, uh, was relatively high crime, um, a lot of violence and nonsense like that. And I found myself getting like these little mini depressions, low energy, um, and uh, all of the indicators of low T, but I just attributed it to my time in the military or yeah. the, the nonsense I was dealing with. I'm like, well, they're just, this just, just must be how I'm dealing with it. And, um, but I was listening to you guys and, uh, I was like, you know what, maybe it's worth just getting checked. So my, my testosterone was down below 400. Um, and you know, so it's been about a, been about a year now since I've, I've been on a, a TRT, um, therapy and it's been a game changer, an absolute game changer. Yeah, no, it totally is. I had the same experience. Um, so it, the, what I was going to recommend is this, cause I I've seen, you know, before we started working with, uh, the people at mphormones.com, we were courted by a lot of these therapy clinics, and I was shocked at the the difference in how some would treat versus others. And one of the main reasons why we chose, uh, you know, MP hormones was because they were not af- they were not afraid to prescribe more testosterone or even uh, human you know grade prescription anabolics to people who might benefit from them because there's a lot of the, the, you know, the old propaganda, right. That we got when anabolic steroids became, you know, like marijuana became part of kind of, you know, uh, public enemy number one type of deal. So, so the, and, and, and here's, here's where I think higher doses of testosterone and, or anabolics may be a value. Number one, based off of feel, some people feel better. So long as all the numbers come back. Okay. They feel better with higher doses. And then number two, People whose lives and jobs uh, require more physical um, capabilities and more resilience, right? So as a law enforcement officer, officer, you fall in that category. So um, if you're interested, you could go to mphormones.com. You could set up an appointment, have them evaluate what, what you're doing, and then see if there's anything different. Because I, like I said, I have some friends now who've done this who are in similar positions to you. And they've added a little bit of like nandrolone, for example, very low dose, but enough okay. to keep the joints yeah. feeling good and they have better performance. Now, if you're sitting at a desk all day long, probably not that big of a deal. But if you're, you know, you're doing what you're doing and every once in a while it's life or death, this is where I think, you know, going with somebody who's not afraid to prescribe a little more might be a, might be a good idea. I'll check that out. All right. Thanks. Thanks for calling in, James. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate your time. No problem. All right. Yeah, you know, when I uh, when I did jujitsu, I totally underestimated its effects on my recovery. Like I thought, oh yeah, oh I could keep Super lifting, demanding. dude. It's like because you know when you're you're first of all, if you've ever wrestled with someone full speed at, for yeah. five minutes, you're dead, right? So he said thirty minutes. Well, you That'll don't go half you. speed at all. Like you no. go one hundred percent, and that's yeah. the thing about that discipline, which it's, is yeah, you got to consider that in terms of your recoverability. It's very demanding, and I was just lifting too much. It took me a while to figure out like I got to do less, and then when I did less, I got stronger mm-hmm. and I felt better. So it wasn't like I did less and got less. I got better results as a result of it. And a lot of people who do this kind of training, they want to do everything all at once. And it doesn't it doesn't work out better that way. Strength training, one of the beauties of it is that you don't need to do a lot of it to get great results from it. As long as you send the signal, yeah. you're going to get some strength and muscle from it. And for some people, depending on what they're doing, once a week is plenty. You know, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I keep looking at our base three, um, you know, uh, programs, our aesthetic and anabolic and performance, and it's like it's really you can identify almost anybody into like very much one of those is going to speak to them the loudest, and that's like your hub, that's your yeah. homeostasis, and then you can branch out a bit, uh, you know, based on what your body wants to experience and kind of stretch the capacity. But you know, for him, it's very much it speaks. You know, Maps performance is really going to help him out. The the biggest challenge he's going to have, and I, and I love that Sal said it, and I'm just going to reiterate it because it, the the idea of doing what you can tolerate versus what's best for you is where he'll have the biggest challenge. I mean, because somebody like this, who's got the discipline that he has, the consistency, he may feel like, Oh, I could easily do two days or three days and to, I can handle it. Yeah. And yeah. he, and he probably would, he'd probably do it and, and be fine and be okay. But understanding that doing what your body can tolerate and doing what is optimal for it are two different things. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, learning to dance that dance, I think will be the, the greatest challenge for him of, 
of being objective and going like, okay, yeah, I know I'm doing two times a week and I'm okay, mm-hmm. but am, am I, is this what's optimal? And mm-hmm. if I were to scale back to one, would I see even better performance and feel even better at my job? That's, I think that's, I mean, that's taken me years and years and I still feel like totally. I, you know, am, am always trying to work that out. So that'll be his biggest challenge. Next caller is Nathan from Iowa. What's up, Nathan? How can we help you? Oh, not too much. Uh, I just want to, you know, start by, uh, I appreciate uh, being able to hear people talk about uh, fitness and just bullshit with each other. Uh, I don't get a chance to do that too often, so it's nice to be able to hear that. Plus, you know, a lot of the stuff you guys talk about has helped me kind of reframe how I approach programming because I work with a lot of people who have a whole bunch of issues so it helps um, having a different mindset than just uh, kind of what you learn in school and through the certifications and stuff like that so i really appreciate it and uh, yeah thank you also want to say uh, adam i appreciated uh, the story you were saying on uh, the christmas eve uh podcast when you're talking about how uh you can't ever find anything and you think you're your wife moves it around or puts it in a crazy yeah. place because it happens to me all the time. And I thought I was uh, going crazy. Oh, so you're it's not alone. It's dude. Not, <laughs> you evolve. I'm not the hey, only one. We evolve yeah. from hunters. That's that's it. That's my excuse. <laughs> Sorry, honey. I'm a hunter. Yeah. That's right. Always an explanation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll give that a shot. We'll see if it works. We'll see if it no, works. No, no, no. Don't tell her that. Don't tell her that. <laughs> that's just between us. Okay. Awesome, man. Let's, right. let's hear it. What do you got going on? So, um, like, I think the biggest issue I'm dealing with right now is I really want to get into strength training because it's not something I've ever really focused on too much because I hurt myself a few years back and uh, it was kind of bad. And so it's always been kind of in the back of my mind. So I've been keeping it light, but then I decided, you know, I got to get over that. I got to start strength training, but I noticed that my serratus interior, like I can't get it to activate. And it's causing like pretty bad scapular winging. So I don't want to start strength training or anything like that. So I definitely get that, that fixed. And I don't know, I've tried a whole bunch of stuff. I even went and got a a certification in corrective exercise, but uh, still haven't been able to figure out what I'm doing wrong. Mm -mm. Do you, is it both sides or is it just one side? No, it's both sides. Yeah. Okay. No, no previous injury. There's nothing like a like a nerve issue or anything like that, right? No. And then, when do you get the winging? Is it when you do things like push ups or or presses? Uh, I noticed it mainly during presses because I didn't feel it before, and I just happened. I was doing some some cable presses, and I glanced in the mirror, and then I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> yeah. Like, how far they were they were sticking out and. Yeah, so I've been trying to fix it since, but yeah, this you know I'm I'm gonna be honest with you, Nathan. I I've had a few this I had a few clients. Difficult one. This is one of the harder things to correct. It sounds silly, but it's true, and it's because getting the scapula to do what you want. People are so it's like teaching a front lat spread, you know, a bodybuilder pose to someone who's never done it before. It's a weird thing to do to get your to to get your scapula to go from winging to to spreading out, which is kind of what you wanted to do. There's a couple exercises that I've seen that work pretty well for this. There's a scapular push-up you could do, and you might want to do this elevated or even on a wall where you, mm-hmm. you have your arms extended. You allow your shoulder blades to come together, and then your goal is to push your body away. Your arms are straight the whole time, right? Yeah, exactly, without bending your elbow. Yeah, so without bending your elbow. And what you're doing is you're bringing the shoulders forward and bringing everything forward and then letting them pinch back. That might help you activate. Then you can also try like dumbbell pullovers or straight arm pull downs. Now it's not directly working the serratus, but it will help stabilize. Um, so you could try that as well. And those are the two movements that I've had the best success with. I would, with I would people. I would prime that with handcuff with rotation first. So I would do handcuff with rotation, and then I would go into that into those movements. I think would be an ideal way to get him into that. One of the hardest things to teach mm-hmm. the um, I, don't, I don't even know what you call the the push up where you what you're talking about. Is it the push up plus? Yeah, what's what Sal is talking about? I don't know what what is it. What do we name? Sca- it? Scapular push up. Yeah, so you you just that. arms are just extended. And you're yeah, just, and yeah. it's it, I you're think it, if away. someone hasn't got connected to be able yeah. to articulate that as a harder move. So I love handcuff with rotation yeah. first. 
to get to get. I was going to say something similar, uh, and it was more around like uh, scapular circles, and you know, doing like more of a kin stretch with that. So trying to really intensify like isometric contraction while you know taking it through the full range of motions. So elevating it, depressing it, you know, and, and protracting it, retracting it, and just doing those circles, uh, nice and slow and cadence, and really squeezing. Uh, you know, intensively uh, to be able to really try to get some neuromuscular connection. Yeah. So, you know, the challenge, so my, the best success I ever had was with uh, focusing on movement and not the muscle, which is different than what I would do with other corrective yeah, right. uh, issues. So when you're doing the scapular push up, start with the wall. Okay. Don't do it on the floor. Start with your hands on the wall and your, your, your feet are out away from you. So you're kind of leaning up against the wall a little bit with your arms straight. And then with your arms totally straight, see how far you could push your back away from the wall, your mid back, like you're rounding and pushing forward as far as you can. And then bring your body close as you can to the wall with your arms totally straight. That was the best success I had with getting people to connect to the movement. When I tried to get people to really focus on the shoulder blade and the surround, I was like, did not work. It just, cause it's such a weird muscle. We dip, we definitely don't connect to it like we would with other muscles. So that, that was the best thing that I ever, yeah. ever what's, gotten. What's you your prime pro? Yeah, he does. He does. You have, you, yeah. you said you had Prime Pro, Nathan. Yeah, and uh, the regular Prime. Are you? Are have you done the handcuff with rotation? No, not oh. yet. I've been doing like the the wall circles and like the mm -hmm. prone Cobra. I'm pulling the okay. shoulder blade. You got it. Down. You got to do handcuff with rotation. Do that. Do that. In fact, I would spend a lot of my time doing that even before after working out. I'm talking about just you know watching TV, hop down, do that movement. I think that's. Uh, I think that personally, that's one of the things that will benefit you the most. And then I would go into what Sal is saying. So I would start with handcuff with rotation, and then I would go into the movement that Sal is talking about, whether you do it off the wall or uh, off the floor. Uh, Nathan, what's your what's your day look like? Like at work and stuff like that. Are you in a, a seated position all day long, or what's what do you got going on? There? It varies. Typically, I'm on my feet. Okay. Yeah. You know, the challenge is that you can do a lot of movements without protracting the scapula. So, Cause you're not looking, the issue isn't retracting the scapula. The issue is protracting it. And the issue is maybe even elevating it. So we want to do movements that force you to do protracting and elevating mm -hmm. and you know, handcuff for the rotations might do it, but you might be able to go through and it wouldn't look good, but you might be able to go through the motion with a wing scapula. You couldn't do it. Here, here's another movement, Nathan. Try this. Try holding an, a barbell or dumbbells overhead, so completely overhead, arm straight, and then You're shrug your shoulders, your shoulders, and then shrug your shoulders, and then let them come down, and then shrug your shoulders, and then let them come down. Like You want to do movements that force that position or that movement, and, and stop focusing so much on connecting, because the serratus is, a, is a, it's one of those strange muscles that even if you connected to, you wouldn't necessarily notice unless you had a really, really good, well-developed uh, serratus. But like I said, with the with the wall push, uh, the wall scapula press, you're literally just you're extending your arm. You're just you're trying to get your upper mid back away from the wall as far as you possibly can, and then you're allowing, and then you're trying to bring your chest to the wall as much as you can while maintaining straight arms. Does, does that make sense? The way I'm explaining it. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, All right. I can picture it in my mind. Yeah, give that a shot and and you know see how everything feels. Notice if see if there's a difference between the shoulders. Oh yeah, definitely. Because like something I've tried before is similar to what you're talking about, but instead of like shrugging up, I just like hold it and do like a isometric hold there, trying to get it to to activate and. It's hit and miss sometimes. Yeah, forget trying to feel it and activate it. Just focus on the 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 mo the movement that you're trying to get first. Then you'll start to connect to it afterwards. And uh, should I wait till it's like completely, you know, like I don't have scapular winging before moving into like strength training, or is there not necessarily? No. You just you would if you are going to strength train, you would you would really focus on what Sal said is the movement. Don't get caught up in weight and reps and trying to really yeah. load like you are trying to make the movement like you you mentioned seeing yourself the reflection in the mirror and seeing you winging so bad it, whatever that weight was you were doing i would cut it in half at that moment and then you, really try and get you to get into good posture while you you do know it. i re, i'm just remembering right now i literally mm -hmm. had a client years ago this was the most frustrating thing ever and i could not figure out how to get her to get protractor so you know what i finally did nathan is I had her sit on a row machine. So her chest was supported by the pad. She's holding the handles like she's going to do a row. We did a row. 
so we were able to, to to squeeze the shoulder blades back. Then I let I told her I said, let the handles pull you as far forward as you possibly can. And so what happened is it pulled her forward. She rounded her back. Her shoulders came forward. And then I said, now hold that position. I'm going to take the handles from you. I took the handles, and then she was in that position. And I said, okay, now what I want you to do, and I, I had her put her palms out, is I pushed on her hands and had her resist and hold that position. I literally had to have weight force her in that position before mm. having her activate. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. You, another thing you can try. So. There you go. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Thank you. No problem. I tell you what, dude. When it oh, comes man. to correctional exercise, one of the hardest, difficult. One. This was a nemesis. You don't. You, so you don't like handcuff with rotation in this situation. Uh, you know why? Because I literally worked with a lady who she had nerve damage that oh. she was repair coming mm -hmm. from. Yeah. And I actually worked with a physical therapist, and we did all kinds of shit. And you would be surprised how much stuff you could do. Yeah. With a winging scapula. Oh yeah. yeah. And finally, you can compensate like crazy. And finally, literally, what I said is what I did. I had her hold on, and it, it pulled yeah. her shoulders because I could not get her to protract. Then I had the weight pull her forward. Yeah. And I said, all right, let go of the weight. And then she held that position. So and protracting is the hardest. That it's yeah. that it's like spreading the wings, right? I, that, I, I love the seat. And I didn't even know how we would explain that to him. I, you did the best I think we can yeah. because that is a movement I love to do with this person too, is get in the seated row position and just practice the almost like the lap pose, like you yes. were saying. Yeah. And you but that's uh, boy, that's hard to tell someone so and get hard. them to do it. But if I was there it's with them. It's strange. Like, I'm just thinking of like a medicine ball or something, like hugging it and like yeah. squeezing it. And, and really the idea is like, obviously if you're, if you're holding a weight that's pulling you forward or hugging something, the resistance is, is where you're trying to pull back. Yeah. We need to give them resistance to pull forward, but sometimes they can't get in that position. So it's like assisted. Yeah. I even, I even, I even put my hands on this woman's shoulder blades and push them forward to get her to get into that position. And then I just told her to hold it. You know how hard it was just for her to hold it? Yeah. It was like a six month process, but we finally got it to work. So whenever I hear this, I'm like, I get chills. I'm like, oh, this is my nemesis. <laughs> oh, man. This is my nemesis. Here it is. Our next caller is John from Connecticut. What's up, John? How can I help you? Hey, Sal. How's it going? What's up, man? So uh, first off, just thank you guys for having me on here. Um, it's a kind of a new podcast for me. I'm kind of a podcast junkie, but um, you guys are awesome and I'm a relatively new listener, but, uh, haven't missed an episode. So, uh, awesome. thanks for all the content and, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Perfect. Glad to have you. Um, so thanks for taking my question. Um, it kind of, uh, relates to golf specific exercises. And, uh, I just wanted to give you guys some context and background, uh, before I, before I ask my question, but, um, so I'm 31 years old now and, uh, the past few years I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of recovering from what you guys have been talking about on some recent podcasts, as far as, you know, a cortisol, uh, junkie, um, mm -hmm. doing way too much cardio to try and stay in shape and, uh, really regretting the, uh, neglecting the weights. Um, so now I'm back on, uh, with like kind of a three by three, um, splitting up the week and, and getting back into the weights. So I'm happy with that. And now with golf, uh, season right around the corner, I'm interested in, um, adding some golf specific exercises into my routine. So I was wondering what you guys thought about, um, you know, focusing on specific body parts or adding specific exercises or stretching to my routine to, uh, to gear up for golf season. John, this so. is a good question, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, the golf swing has got to be one of the most complicated, um, I, I guess physical <laughs> feats in any sport. I'm sure I don't need to tell you that. And it's unintuitive. <laughs> yeah. And then the second part, and again, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this, but the vast majority of the, the distance you're going to get on the ball comes from your technique, right? Very little comes from your actual physical strength, which I'm sure you, I mean, physical strength contributes, but it's about the technique uh, the, of hitting the ball, the speed and how you're able to transfer the power that you do generate um, from the ground. Again, I don't. I know I don't need to tell you that, but I want to say that because there's other people listening. And just getting stronger isn't going to make you hit the ball further, especially if getting stronger uh, results in your technique being off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you can do this by building a lot of muscle. So you can build a lot of muscle, and now your body's built a little differently. It throws off your swing, and although you're stronger, you're not hitting uh, any further. And so it's like, you know, what did I do this for? Okay, so... Now that we understand that, what's going to help you most with the power from a physical uh, you know, power perspective, I think we need to focus first on where you think you're weakest. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it's, it's the obvious general answer would be to strengthen your core, to do rotational exercises like uh, cable chops 
uh, upward chops, downward chops, you know, windmills, that kind of stuff. That's kind of obvious, but I've worked with, um, people who, you know, want want to do the same thing you wanted to do. And we got their hips stronger and that's what did it for them because their lower body was weaker. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you know what areas your body are probably the weakest or areas you probably need to focus on? Yeah. I mean, I think it's mostly core and lower body, which is basically the foundation of the golf swing. So I'm wondering, um, you know, maybe I just need to really hone in on those body parts and strengthen those the most. Um, yeah. And then the, the skills and everything will translate over and, and not diminish. And I'll just have that much more uh, strength in those areas. Yeah. You know, what would be, you know, what would probably be good, John, is using the sled uh, driving mm-hmm. forward, uh, backwards and laterally, mm-hmm. um, because it connects the, uh, everything from the toes up to the hips and the upper body involves the upper body. So you're going to get a lot of strength translated all the way through. Of course, you know, barbell squats and lunges and stuff like that will make you stronger, might help as well. But I see the sled being a little bit more transferable, uh, in terms of I, lower body for the golf, for golf swing. I like to defer to people that are better at this than than myself or I think any of us in here. Not that I couldn't help you if you were a client, but I mean, I, there's somebody out there that's way better and more qualified to help you than myself. And there's a group of guys um, that I follow on Instagram. We've actually had him on the show before, on the YouTube channel before, uh, and they specialized golf, baseball, mm-hmm. and fighters. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, Brandon, his, his Instagram handle is Brandon PFS. Mm-hmm. So look up, look up their group. Like his whole entire okay. Insta- Instagram is like dedicated. He's been working a lot. He's he's the. We did a video with him series in here. Yeah, did we do it? Was it mm-hmm. golf related too? Yeah, I think it was. Right. Yeah. So if you go to how our, recently was that? Oh, uh, it was a long. Yeah, it was yeah. A years so ago. if you go to our YouTube channel and just put Mind Pump Golf <clears throat> Swing or Mind Pump. Uh, brand in PFS. You yeah, just go to the show notes and it'll be there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. perfect. Thank, Thanks, thank you, Doug. Yeah, oh, so we'll, awesome. Yeah, we'll link in the show Thanks, notes. Doug. Um, but yeah, look, look them up. They they specialize in in primarily those three sports. You will see that he's what's the name of the kid with the the kind of clown hair that's a badass fighter right now. Right. Uh, sugar, oh, sugar. Sugar. No idea. Sugar Shane. Shane yeah. yeah. So he's he not. he works with <laughs> him. Boxer. So a lot of his current stuff you'll see is kind of related to fighting. But if you go deep enough on his stuff, or if you look up, he's got programming. He's got a lot of stuff around and content around golf, baseball, and fighting. And I just the information that he's providing as far as cool, unique well, exercises that will translate to the golf course, the, he's got it. In terms of our stuff and what we have available already too, like in mass performance, we have you know some really good stick mobility um exercises that will help to you know improve you know lateral line in 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 terms of like thoracic rotation uh things that it'll help to kind of guide your body and put in positions where you can create and and create more torque in that rotation Mm -hmm. um and so that's something to consider uh and that's why i mentioned too with windmills because not a lot of people spend any kind of focus or time on windmills but it really does um you know contribute well towards you know these types of sports uh you know the hip hinging patterns an essential part of that whole swing so um you know to be able to strengthen the hips and you know put some emphasis there i i like personally um uh zercher squats uh you know for golfers as well the way it's like loaded uh, in the crook of your elbows um and um i think that those are just you know some great things to focus on just to strengthen and contribute towards that thanks doug sugar sugar sean not sugar shane it's sorry sh- it's sugar sugar yeah, there's no R. Sugar. O'Malley? Sean O'Malley? Yeah, yeah. Sean O'Malley. Thank yeah. you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So he works, he works, he has been working with him for actually years. I imagine they're friends or whatever. But uh, so the point of me telling you that was that his page looks like it's geared towards all fighters, but mm-hmm. they we actually met them and got connected to them because uh, we, Justin wrote a, actually a golf guide. Yeah, that, so there's, it's like an infographic. It shows all these exercises that are very helpful, uh, you know, for gaining mobility and speed and uh, it's on and our power mind, in your swing. Mindpumpfree.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Go so to mindpumpfree.com. So if you go to mindpumpfree.com, there there's, you go. there's a, a guide that's related that we did. So what inspired us to get hooked up with Brandon was Justin was writing a guide specific for golfers, uh, some priming movements and stuff that were, will benefit you. Um, and that led us down the kind of the rabbit hole of like, hey, who's in our space that's doing this that we think is doing it better than we are? Um, and then that's why we invited Brandon. So, mm-hmm. you know, dig through their stuff. Um, I think that uh, they've got great content that uh, will support what we're saying. Yeah, that's that's awesome, guys. I appreciate it. 
um, you know, one of the big things about golf too, is just kind of avoiding injury and, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, maintaining the flexibility and mobility in some of those joints. So, uh, it's not just getting stronger and and stuff like that, because that can almost, um, change things like Sal was saying in terms of your swing. Um, but, uh, as long as I can avoid injury in my oblique area, my lower back, um, and kind of get ahead of any issues lingering or potential. And that's where we, that's kind of where we come from. Right. So that's, uh, you know, we, we, the stuff that we have out there is more to bolster and to protect, um, you it's like there's bulletproof your back and all those yeah. mm-hmm. uh, so, joints. So the content that is in that free guide, that's going to be a value along those lines. If you wanted more specific exercises in the gym that translate to the golf swing, I think that's where you're going to enjoy some of the stuff that, that Brandon's putting out over there. Um, but the, the stuff in that free guide that we have, and then the stuff that's in maps performance, uh, I think will benefit you, especially what Justin was talking about with the stick mobility, some isometric work that we have, like those things are going to kind of bulletproof you and, and protect you. And, and you're right. Like that's, that's going to benefit you more for your golf swing more than, than anything yeah, else. Yeah, You need free flow movement it needs to be smooth and mm-hmm. you know, no hitch in that at all. And so like, yeah, mobility is at the utmost importance, you know, overall in, in terms of like, even just trying to get stronger. Okay, great. On top of that, is there one other thing I could ask um, in terms of like general um, weightlifting and resistance training to kind of intertwine with with cardio at this point? True, let's hear it. Um, So like right now, like I told you, I was just kind of addicted to cardio for uh, a few years and I I regret it. But um, I've been trying to do and commit to three days of full body workouts and three days of cardio. Cause I, I just enjoy cardio for the mental aspects and just, you know, getting a sweat in sure. helps with everything. So how would you guys recommend, um, you know, doing cardio to a point where you're not overdoing it and sending your body mixed signals, um, and diminishing the returns and the results and gains you're getting on those, uh, you know, foundational workout type days, be fed, keep it under an hour, and do it on different times than when your workout workout are. That's also, mine. you just said that the number your the main reason why you do it is the mental benefits. Uh, so who cares? Do do it. Be, do what you love. I mean, you can okay. follow what Adam said. Which well, is, yeah, I that's mean, the objective physical answer. Right? But mm-hmm. if you do it for your mental effects and you enjoy it, then just do what you love and yeah, just make he, sure you don't. He over- won't enjoy it if it's diminishing his returns sure. on his other stuff. Exactly. Right? So that's yeah, that's, that's how you. That's, what I'm that's how at you too. like. Obviously, mm-hmm. we would probably recommend you. That's not a high priority if you want to be great at golf. But if you, for what Sal's saying, if you enjoy for the benefits, yeah, keep doing it. But there's a, a better way to do it, so you don't, you know, and that would be scheduling it a, away from when you're weight training. Uh, keep it under an hour, um, and you know, give your make sure you're fed. Those things will probably help uh, the most as far as mitigating yeah. any sort of muscle loss or it hindering anything totally. else you're trying mm-hmm. to do. And keeping it under an hour, but maybe gearing it more towards like a high intensity um, would help with the like shredding body fat. The percentage. higher, the, the higher, the intensity, the shorter it should be, yeah. but the, the mm-hmm. but don't, okay. Do not do cardio to burn body fat. The cardio yeah. is for stamina or endurance or cause you enjoy it. You want to get leaner, look at your diet. Okay. It's, it's, it's a, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a That's much, true. much more effective approach. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, John. Thanks for calling him. Yeah. Thank you, guys. No thank problem. you very much. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, um, I remember as a young trainer, I did not realize just how complex, you know, improving power and strength so that you see a positive result in a sport was. Right. I thought you get stronger. Well, you're going to see it. This you know? is the trap where you see a lot of uh, young trainers, yes. myself included, where you just start trying to emulate those um, swings and things with cables, swings <laughs> yeah, with yes. kettlebells, swings with you know, and, and you think you're you're doing them a service because uh, now we're adding load to that. And it literally has no carryover, no trans. It no. doesn't translate at all. In fact, it actually ruins. It throws the off your technique. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. So in terms of something as complicated as a, uh, a golf swing, well, the best thing you can do is keep your joints super healthy and responsive. Yeah. And, and the other thing to consider too, is that, it, you know, when you're, it's such a complex movement and you get so good at the body shape and size you have with the complex movement, adding muscle to your body, you now change, uh, yeah. one factor. The recruitment pattern shifts. And you're you. bigger. Your yeah. arms are in a different position. You know, you add a half an inch to your arms and they're in a different position than they were before. 
and it'll change the technique. Especially with golf. No, mo- with golf more than almost anything, anything else. else. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it becomes- now, if it's a sport like football where your body mass is important, yeah, you can add 10 pounds, move a little different, don't matter, you're heavier and stronger. Yeah, especially if you have a position like a lineman or running back exactly. where you don't, you know what I'm saying, where the technique can be off a tiny bit and your but mass, the mass, makes mass up and the- strength yeah. makes yes. up for the little bit of the technique being off where golf you are off in just a, a smidge on Forget your technique. It. And, you know, you could be 10 times stronger, but that technique's slightly yeah. off and you're fucked. So the best way, obviously, if you're trying to gain strength, I mean, you know, go through your strength training program, but you really need to incorporate that technique and swing in between constantly. and during, like constantly keeping that, uh, you know, at uh, the forefront. Yep, totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find us on social media. Justin and Adam are both on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and I'm on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 